to Jurassic World. Hello and welcome everybody to our Jurassic World Evolution 2 live stream today. My name is Tim Smith and I am the lead community manager here at Frontier Developments and I'm very excited to be your host as we talk about all things Jurassic World Evolution 2. So today we have got our August monthly highlight stream so we will of course have some very special guests on to talk to you and uh, we'll also as I know a lot of you have been asking for it and are very excited, we're going to have a little bit of live gameplay later on in the stream as well. So hang around, enjoy the show. We're going to chat with some incredible people. And don't forget, as you saw in that trailer, you can now pre-order Jurassic World Evolution 2. It's coming out on November 9th. And there's even a deluxe edition as well with some pretty amazing stuff in there. So to start off our stream, as, uh, as we always say, I won't be doing this alone. So I would love to introduce you to our first guest. So without further ado, uh, Amy, welcome to the stream. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. Yeah, excited. Very exciting. Very excited. What do you think of the streaming studio as well? Lovely. Do you like our new, uh, our new addition? It's hanging out in the background there. Yeah, I love that. It's like, it's like he's in the room or he's out the window, one of the two. Yeah, she's, she's swimming a by. Submarine, it's, maybe. it's pretty great. <laughs> so uh, Amy, you are the lead animator. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit more about what that is? Well, I help to guide the animator, animators in creating really awesome and believable animation. Really, right. make really cool dinosaurs, basically. It's fantastic. And uh, I can imagine that's, uh, of course, it's not just the loan as well, it's with a big team. Yes, yes, there's quite a few of us. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot to do on your own, that's for well, sure. Well, no, I can imagine. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> dinosaurs don't appear overnight, right? There's a lot of them, too. There's, there's a lot of them. So, I mean, speaking of all of these dinosaurs, is uh, a dinosaur something that you've been interested in uh, growing up, or is it a love that you found after you arrived at Frontier? No, I was I was always interested in dinosaurs. I remember having lots of dinosaur toys, and I think I think I ended up seeing Jurassic Park three first. So I remember that was having the first one. Yeah, the, it was the first one? one I saw. The third okay. one. I remember really loving the Spinosaurus for a long time. It was one of my favourites. And uh, I'm guessing the love for the other films came shortly after seeing the third one as well. Oh yes, yes. The first Amazing. one is great. Yeah, definitely. Fantastic. <laughs> You can't beat the original. Sorry? You can't beat the original. You can't film. beat the original. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's absolutely true. And you said uh, one of your favourites was the Spinosaurus in the films, mm -hmm. but uh, out of the dinosaurs and reptiles that we've seen so far, would you say there's any that are your favourite on there as well? So far, I think the Dimorphodon is my favourite. It's like a little flying guy. Yeah. It's kind of adorable, too. It's a very cute little flying gargoyle. Yeah. That is very, very true. Um, and what do you reckon would be the most exciting part of uh, Jurassic World Evolution 2 that uh, everybody at home can look forward to? Well, I, I can't wait to really for everyone just to see all the animations. I mean, we've got exciting new things to show off and it's just, it's just something I'm really looking forward to seeing. Yeah, how I can imagine it's to something it. that like, you and everybody else are super proud to see out there and everybody um, who's been watching the pre-order trailer and everything from the other information this week and the species field guides They've all been so excited to see all of these different things of the animations. You've got like the the rolling. Yes. And, uh, oh goodness, yes. I love the fact we've got we've got resting and the social interactions they do. It's like it's just adding extra character and something else for them to do. Show off the fact that they're more like animals than the big movie monsters they're always depicted as in the films. Yeah, of just course. Just show like the other side of the coin. It's it's incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love watching over and over again all of the <laughs> species field guides and seeing all these different things that they can do. And it's been amazing watching everything that's been uh, on YouTube recently as well. Oh, yes, uh, yes. Seeing, seeing how all of the dinosaurs behave and all the incredible animations that are in there. Uh, well, I reckon we can probably have a little bit of a look at the Dimorphodon, right? Yeah. Let's have a look. So uh, for those at home, you can see we have a species field guide playing. <laughs> The Dimorphodon, a member of the pterosaur family. 
It is a fairly poor flyer, mainly due to its shorter wingspan. It relies pretty pretty, on frantic actually. short yeah. flights. I'm going to go with pretty, pretty. They look I incredible. Like I love bright them. eyes and little fluffy the little, eyebrows. The it's shimmy pretty. that they do at the end there as well. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, what would you say would be one of the, the more um, exciting parts that you've had with approaching this? Because, of course, the Dimorphodon, um, a member a of the Pterosaur family. And there's a lot of new things that are going to be in Jurassic World Evolution 2. So with the Dimorphodon, that's your favourite. Yes. Uh, what do you reckon? Yeah, Jean did a lovely job animating this one. It's got really lovely wing beats. We've got a whole system which, with different types of flying which blends together to create this wonderful, wonderful trajectory through the air. I really, really love them when they sit on the feeders and they eat the fish. Yeah. Because they've got like, she's like it's, it's beautiful animation where she just picks up a fish and she's got it in her mouth and it's flapping away and she's just sat there <laughs> holding it. It's just it's adorable. I love it. You just sat there with the fish at the feeders. Yeah. We're, um, we're just going to double check our mic levels. Um, are they all looking good? Awesome. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible when they're there <laughs> um, having that little bit of a meal time. Do you reckon there was any part that was um, a little bit more of a challenge to approach with uh, animating for flying? Because, of course, so it all looks pretty incredible. You can imagine that there's, like, with the hugely skilled team you have making that happen. Yeah, uh, obviously. Most dinosaurs walk around on the land, but of course uh, the flying reptile here flies in three dimensions. So I know there was a lot of hard work gone into making sure that they could climb and dive yeah. realistically without looking mad. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that was really interesting. Yeah. Of course you see a long flowing tail as well. I think most of that's dynamic. Right. And there's a lot of tech put in to make sure that it's sat on the ground. Because like, they can perch on, on certain things as well, and so her tail will hang down in those situations, and then on the ground, obviously, it's flat. Yes. That, was, that was some pretty handy tech going in for that. It's a lot of hard work gone into making sure those, those small details, like you said, with the hanging tail, that's all, all in line. Yeah. No, that makes, yeah. that makes complete sense. Uh, I know one thing that the community have, of course, picked up on, and I've seen a couple of, a couple of clips running around, is uh, when the flying reptiles managed to escape. So do you reckon you could tell us a little bit more insight for that one? Yeah, I mean, they'll break out. And of course, breaking through a big glass dome, or, it's, it's quite a hard thing to do. So they usually, they, they tend to, after breaking out and terrorizing your guests a few times, like pinning them to the ground, it's great. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's great. Uh, you might find them resting on nearby- It's not great for the guests. <laughs> No, they'll be great to watch, day. but maybe not great for your guests if you want them to be happy. I mean, yeah, I'm pretty. It's a good disclaimer, fair. right? That is a good, disclaimer. a good disclaimer. Yeah, but I mean, if you want carnage, then go for it, right? <laughs> I mean, I guess if you're um, if you're an enthusiast after the films and that's the kind of thing that you want to see happen in your park, reenact the film, then yeah, right. That's very true. Are you going to send them down, send them down Main Street? <laughs> yes, exactly. But yeah, so they'll they'll perch on like lampposts and nearby buildings and stuff, get their breath back before they go around for another sweep again. <laughs> <laughs> Just come back for another go. Didn't maybe didn't get them the first time. Mm. Maybe go for them the second time. They might even go off into your other enclosures and cause havoc with some of the residents there as well. <laughs> residents. Yeah, the residents. The residents. <laughs> I like that idea. The residents will build little residential areas. Yeah, they're homes, for, right? I mean, that's true. They are homes for the, the dinosaurs and reptiles. And reptiles. And reptiles, yes. of course. Uh, let's have a little quick look. Um, there's so many of you uh, in the chat. It's, it's incredible. Uh, I've been trying to keep up with some of the things in here, but I can see an awful lot of excitement. Um, so thank you very much for that. I'll try and pull bits out of there. But with, uh, with quite a few of you, it's, it goes quite quickly for us. So you know, we'll do what we can. We'll do what we can, right? <laughs> So I think um, we could maybe have a look at the next species field guys then and have a little chat about that one. Uh, and that one is another one of our flying friends, our flying reptiles, and that would be the Pteranodon. It, yes, it is the Pteranodon. Well, you know, I, was, I said it with confidence and that's what matters, right? Um, so I actually know that this is another one of your favorites as alongside the Dimorphodon. Um, is there any sort of interesting tidbits that you'd want to share about uh, our friend the Pteranodon there? Um, be pretty incredible. Oh, she's a really, she's much, much larger, so she flies with far more weight. And 
she because she's so much bigger yeah like you, you don't want to mix them together right i mean carnage <laughs> would happen well i mean you're a fan of carnage i am a fan of you're carnage. a fan of carnage i mean don't get me wrong i do play the game nice i like to build little houses and habitats and stuff but i do know there are some people out there who just love the thrills and stuff like that of course i mean you have and your they are thrill really, seekers they are really fun to animate too i'll be yeah? honest it's fun so it's what parts, uh, do you want to talk a little bit more about the, the fun of animating the pteranodons? Yes, well I managed, I got, I got my hands on the pteranodon for a bit. I managed to animate her eating a goat. Is, a goat? Yes, a goat. A pteranodon? Yes. Eating a goat? Yes. I've got to hear more about that. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds amazing. It was, it was really fun. We were looking at reference of eagles hunting foxes. Right. Just because you have to try and get like the trajectories that come down and then the force is the impact on the goat and oh, it was it was it was it was fun. It was a really fun challenge. And I can't wait for everyone to see it. <laughs> That's incredible. I mean, I feel like in the chat, if you want to hear a little bit more about the pteranodon and the goat, if you just type goat, I'll be able to see that. And uh, we can talk a little bit more about the pteranodon and the goat for sure. But we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if that comes up in the chat here. Whilst uh, at least one person saying goat there. <laughs> Um, so we've got the Dimorphodon, yes. we've got the Pteranodon, yeah. um, do you have a little bit more that you'd be able to share about what happens if these, these things in the sky end up in the same place? Yeah, well one of them is, is very much not as titanic as the other, right. if you put them together, Dimorphodon, <laughs> you've seen it in the film as well, Dimorphodon is quite a bit smaller than the Pteranodon, right. and I'm, I'm pretty sure they don't get on. They don't get on. I'm pretty sure they don't get on. Okay. Yeah, so I, I think there might be some trouble if you put them together. All right. You could always distract them with a goat. Yeah, goats would yeah. probably keep them happy. I don't so, know if the Dimorphodon might be unhappy, but the Pteranodons would be fine with the goats, yeah. Well, speaking of, <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit more about the Pteranodon taking on the goat. You said yes. that was a lot of fun, and you have the references with the eagles. It will be really great to hear a bit more about that. Uh, chat did respond. Thank you very much. They would love to hear more about the pteranodon and the goat, absolutely. Yes, I, I watched, because um, I remember I was looking at loads of reference of eagles hunting foxes, because you've got some amazing stuff out yeah. there. And I, I think eventually I settled on, it might have been a rabbit in the end, if I remember correctly. The way this eagle just comes right down, grabs hold of the rabbit. And I think, I was, it might have been a fox. Doesn't, that's not important. Yeah, that's the point okay. is, it was a small fluffy animal, right? Sure. And the eagle ended up rolling basically over it and it lifted it right over the top and I was like I need to I need to get some of that in this <laughs> so rather rather than do just the simple the simple animation I decided to go all out and had had proper fun with it to have this whole rolling mechanic going on it's great that's amazing it really you probably would probably be better to see it than have me describe it to you <laughs> I mean everybody of course on November 9th when Jurassic World Evolution 2 is available We'll be able to set up some aviaries and have some pteranodons around and get a few goats on the park. Yep. And uh, of course, you'll be able to play around with this for yourself and see all of the incredible work um, that uh, Amy and the rest of the animation team have done to really bring this all to life for you. So I think there's, um, of course, there's a much wider team that you work with as well. So. Yes, yes. Just to go back to a little bit more about your, your role as the lead animator. So that involves not only getting hands-on and, for example, helping for finding this stuff, it also involves research for finding good references. I imagine it involves um, taking ideas from the rest of the team. Oh, yes, yes. Putting it all together, helping everybody do the best that it can do, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really creative. Like, you can, you can give someone a task for, like, a specific social and... I'll have something in my head that they might do, right. but otherwise they can go away, they can look at reference, they can like surround themselves with footage of like big animals, like cow, even cows and horses and stuff, just, just anything on four legs or birds, <laughs> depending on what your dinosaur is. Or and reptile. Then, or reptile. Yep. And then they can, they can do, they, they can kind of rough it out and then try and, try and visualize it. And then I can just help guide them towards that, just to make it more believable and wait and yeah, such. of course. Keep the character in there as well. So you're going to see dinosaurs and reptiles. And doing, reptiles. Doing things you wouldn't have normally seen. Incredible. So we know if we don't say the and reptiles part, somebody, and I, I'm going to bet it's somebody from uh, the Discord, uh, is going to be pinging away telling me you missed it. So we, we see. We see you. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Um, 
Fantastic. Well, I think let's um, let's have a look at the pre-order trailer again in a moment. And for now, I'm going to say thank you very much, Amy, for joining us You're and telling welcome. us about your role and for talking about the Dimorphodon and the Pteranodon with us as well. And we're now going to switch over to our next guest. Uh, but while we do that, uh, we can enjoy the pre-order trailer again. So here it is for you. We are back. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the trailer. I know I did. I, I love the arena at the end of that. It's, it's so very, very cool. However, we now have our next incredible guest here. Uh, thank you for joining the stream, Andy Scott. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm really good, thanks. Really excited to be here. Excited for everyone to play the game when, we, when I'm going to release. Fantastic. How did you, what did you think of the trailer, the pre-order trailer that we showed everybody it just looks, now? It looks great, doesn't it? I think it really shows off the game really well and you know, hopefully it gets everyone excited as much as we are. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I just I love the arena at the end and uh, you've got the T-Rex just owning that space. It's absolutely, absolutely incredible. So um, let's maybe start off with um, who you are at Frontier and what you do here. So your title is the Head of Gameplay. So uh, could you tell me a little bit more about what it is you do here at Frontier, but also, of course, what you do on Jurassic World Evolution 2? Yes, of course. Um, on, as head of gameplay, I help no. recruit gameplay programmers. Sorry, one moment. Um, we're just going to check the mic levels. So if you could move your microphone up a little bit. How's that? How's that one now? No? How about now? No? Sorry, everyone. Small technical difficulty. We want to make sure that you can hear Andy as well as you can hear me. I think um, let's, uh, we're just going to go to a very quick back soon. And we're going to fix the microphone. And then we'll be right back with you.
Welcome back. So we're going to test that this is working. I am hoping that you can all hear me. And Andy, let's try again. Hi. Welcome to the stream. Hi, thank you. Can I, we all good? Okay? I think we're good. Okay, great. There so, we go. So, I mean, uh, as the saying goes, anything can happen on live television. Uh, this time it was a microphone, but we, uh, we carry on. So. Uh, everyone in the chat is uh, now, there's lots of yay, yes, it's working, dinosaur emojis. So, Andy Scott, uh, head of gameplay. Yes. Welcome to the stream. Thank you. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Let's talk um, about what you do here at Frontier and on Jurassic World Evolution 2. Of course, yes. So, as head of gameplay, I help recruit new gameplay programmers. I line manage uh, some lead gameplay programmers on other projects. And I'm very happy to say I've been hands on on the dinosaur behaviors on Jurassic World Evolution 2, in particular, the dynamic hunting and fighting behaviors. Incredible. So I actually, I know for a fact, uh, because I've been asked directly many times for more information about that. So that's going to be a treat for all of you in a little bit. We'll probably talk a little bit more about those dynamic systems as well, because we've got the man <laughs> himself, the exact person to talk to for this. Uh, so that's going to be really exciting. But I think what would be really great uh, now that we've <laughs> hearing a little bit more about yourself. So were you always a dinosaur fan or no? <laughs> yes, I've always been a fan. I think we've still got an issue with your mic. So perhaps if you just hold it up, it's not ideal. OK, how about this? Okay. How's that sound, everyone? Is that OK? Um, so I can talk a little bit more, if that's all okay. I think if we'll just talk a little bit and we'll talk about dinosaurs and we'll try with the microphone and see how it's doing. Still no good. Okay. Um, in that case, I will do a lot of talking and uh, you can sort of support me on that one, I think is how we'll have to go forward for this section, unfortunately. Um, but it's all right. We'll figure it out. So I think if we lose the microphone on Andy, and we'll just keep my one, and we'll sort of head forward that way. So um, luckily, I know a certain amount about what you do, <laughs> and you can help me with certain further details. So um, <laughs> someone's saying unplug and plug back in. We gave that one a go when we went to the back soon screen, but unfortunately, this microphone doesn't want to play ball today. Uh, but that's all right. So what we'll do is double check the notes and then we'll carry on. So we're talking about whether you were a dinosaur fan yourself. And uh, I think the answer's got to be yes, yes while being here, right? Absolutely. Um, I can always remember my friend when I was very young having this sticker book and you stick down different dinosaurs yes. and unpeel them. And that was really great to, uh, to kind of play with. Amazing. So. Uh, one of the key things, what I'm going to try is moving over. We're going to share a microphone. And then we're going to see how that goes. All right. Let's, uh, let's try this. Um, chat, can you hear Andy Scott? Hello. How's that? Can you hear me? Can we hear Andy? How's it sounding? Yep. We're going to do it like this. We're going to go back and forth with my microphone. And it's going to be great. So you were telling us about with sticker books as uh, as, a, as a kid. Yeah, one of my earliest memories is a friend having this this book where you could stick down and unpeel dinosaurs and put them in different scenes. And I was very jealous of that that I didn't have it myself. Right. I am. Um, I remember for when I was a kid as well. It wasn't always things like Jurassic Park. Um, my my parents got me this custom book where I was the protagonist, and you crack open an egg. And then a, um, a pterodactyl came out and took me on an adventure, and it was incredible. So I completely get having those like younger things that um, come into what you're doing. It's great fun. Okay. It was great. It was such a good book. <laughs> so um, as we have now got this solution, um, with the volume, is the volume okay? Well, well, we'll be fine. I think you guys can hear Andy. So. Let's have a look at um, our first species field guide together, which is the Chianchosaurus. Um, quite uh, tricky to pronounce, but we're getting there. We gave it a lot of practice, I think. So what are your thoughts on the Chianchosaurus? Yeah, it's great to see one of the lesser known dinosaurs. Um, it looks incredible. 
I think it's got incredible eyebrows. It's really quite memorable. Incredible eyebrows. Yeah, it's great to see. Um, and of course, it's only recently been discovered in 2010. So I think a lot of people haven't heard of it and be quite excited to see it for the first time. Yeah, that's exactly um, the reaction we got from all of you at home. Uh, we put out the species field guide and we, we thought that this would be a popular dinosaur, but we were blown away by just how much everybody loved seeing this new one. Because as you mentioned, 2010, that's really recent. And I think this discovery as well changed how we have to categorize um, certain species as well because of the longer snout. So we've got all of those different bits and pieces. And now, of course, we can bring it to life. Uh, in Jurassic World Evolution 2, which is pretty incredible. It is, absolutely. It's incredible that we're still discovering dinosaurs and it's great that we can add them to our game. Yeah, absolutely. So I think let's go for um, talking about the next thing that I know everyone was excited to hear more about. And as we have got Andy Scott, the man himself, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the dynamic behaviors uh, that you mentioned earlier. Yes, yeah, so... Um, Pack hunting is a new thing. Right. So for me, this really comes back to Jurassic Park, original film. And you've got that classic scene where multiple velociraptors are attacking a T-Rex, and the T-Rex can launch a velociraptor across the room. And this this really got us thinking, you know, how many velociraptors will it take to take down a T-Rex? It's a little bit like um, how many people with a light bulb, but the dinosaur edition. Yeah, and I'm happy to say that we can answer that question when you play Jurassic World Evolution 2. <laughs> Amazing. And um, could you tell us a little bit more about, because of course these, uh, these new dynamic behaviors are, are new in Jurassic World Evolution 2. So I can imagine that there's been an awful lot of work from yourself and from the whole team at Frontier that's gone into that and with all the different systems, right? Yeah, absolutely. There was a lot of challenges that we had to overcome. For example, when the T-Rex throws a velociraptor, what happens is it becomes a, a physical object, a ragdoll object. It can hit the ground, come to a halt, but it doesn't mean it's dead. It can actually um, end up in any number of poses, get itself back up, run back into the fight. During this time, two or three other raptors can be attacking the T-Rex. The T-Rex is doing its best to fend them off. So you've got an awful lot of things going on that each of the dinosaurs needs to, to deal with uh, whilst facing all of these other dinosaurs, which is, is incredible. Absolutely. It's, it's incredibly dynamic. Um, every time you see a fight play out, you might well see something new. I think that's, uh, that's one thing that the community has picked up from different pieces of footage is seeing these dinosaurs going to attack something and missing. And the fact that they can miss and you see them sort of charge off and something manages to survive and run for its life uh, were all these little moments that have been getting shared on Reddit and with us on social media and things like that, where you see this in action, that it's not just um, a surefire thing, it's, it's dynamic. You're going to see all of these things play out and will they survive or will they not? And um, it's amazing how like excited you can be to see that, that kind of thing going on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a, a new responsive dynamic hunting system as part of this. So the, um, the locomotion and navigation tech that we've done for this game will allow the predator to respond instantly. And it's, it's always been important for us to, uh, to respect the, the animator's work. It needs to look good, it needs to look right, it needs to blend at the right yeah. time. So the prey can respond immediately and still kind of um, play the animations correctly. Um, what happens then is the predator will do its best to catch up to the prey. What's going on in the background here is we've got a new stamina system. So if the prey has a greater amount of stamina, it can get away. But if the predator catches up, you'll see some incredibly realistic and very brutal animations. <laughs> and uh, I think <laughs> the brutal animations, we, we met Amy earlier, we know that uh, that she and her team, they're very much into the carnage and making sure that that's in there as well. Yeah, Amy looks really friendly, doesn't she? But she can do a really brutal animation. 
<laughs> it's, uh, I mean, you've just got to be careful. Sometimes these is incredible things that people can do. Uh, and they've got these incredible things that they want you to see in the game. And I know that everybody at home as well, like massively appreciates all the effort that goes in on that side. And I can say without a doubt that they absolutely appreciate all the work that you do and that all the work that the teams do as well, adding these different sides to the gameplay and all of these dynamic movements as well. It's, um, it's incredible. We, we have an incredible team working with us. Um, you know, I'm very much part of, of, a, of a team that's... Uh, so I, w I work on the coding side, but there's um, a lot of collaboration with other teams, with animation, of course, with course. design, um, across the entire board. You know, it's, it's a big collaborative effort. I mean, absolutely. As with any game of this size, and uh, even on our side in communications, there's always an incredible team helping pave the way for everything that you see coming. Um, and everything that uh, everything that happens, it's it's incredible. So I'm just going to give our notes a real quick check because, of course, we need to spend a little bit of time sorting the microphones out soon. Um, I think what we can do is we like the pre-order trailer. Maybe we'll um, we're going to show you the pre-order trailer one more time while we try and fix some of these microphones ready for our next guest. But before we do. I just want to say thank you very much to Andy for coming on the stream today, sharing a little bit more information about all of these incredible systems and um, generally just making the game fantastic. So unless there's anything further you'd like to say to everyone at home? Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Thank you very much. So we're going to pop on the pre-order trailer one more time for you all, uh, do a little bit of technical things in the background, and then we'll be back with another guest for you to meet. So. See you in a moment. Welcome back, and this time, maybe even with uh, working microphones. So uh, to test that, because uh, we're running live, I'd like to introduce you all to Adam Woods. Hi. Hi. Could you hear that? Could you hear that? We'll find out. Um, can we get a hi in the chat if you could hear Adam's hi? Hi, Adam. Hi, Adam. Let's get hi, Adams, in the chat. We're waiting for them. I see people talking about hi. Hi. Oh, there, there it comes. We there we go. Hi, Adam. Uh, they're saying you're a little quiet. I could be louder if you want me to be. Just be louder. Or I can. I mean, I don't know how long I'll keep that up for. My voice might get hoarse or dinosaur. <laughs> oh, 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 I see what you did thank there. Thank you. Very <laughs> thank nice. You. Very nice. So, um, Adam Woods, mm. executive producer. Executive producer, yeah. So, um, for a lot of you on the stream, you'll know Adam very well. Uh, he's joined us many times before. But for those who don't know you, could you tell us a little bit about what your role is on Jurassic World Evolution 2? Yeah, I, um, as you said, Tim, I'm the executive producer. Yeah. Um, my kind of main role is to 
help Rich, who we may or may not see later, spoilers, um, with his vision of the game and then plan out how we're actually going to get that from A, which is concept, to all the way through to release. Uh, that's kind of like my main over, overall goal. Uh, I also lead the production team themselves. Um, and production as a whole is, is kind of, I've said this before probably on stream, so uh, apologies if I'm going over old ground. But we we're kind of the oil ground. between the, the cogs. And that's a really horrible way to describe the other team members. But they do the work. Production kind of makes sure that those cogs are running as smooth as possible and that they animation, design, code, audio, all the, the team that are making this incredible uh, game can actually do their job and, uh, to the best of their abilities. That's kind of uh, the nitty gritty of production itself. Um, I also do puns quite a bit, you as, do you, puns. as you tell from the okay. beginning. Pretty yeah. good at them. Um, but that wasn't, I, I didn't need to do that to get the job, so that was good. Um, I mean, that's refreshing because on my side, the puns were a requirement. To, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. you've got yeah, you to have that. When you're working with the community, community manager, you've yeah. got to be able to, uh, yeah. to roll, with those, roll with those little bits and pieces. Yeah. Uh, and since we've asked everyone else so far, mm. what, are your, what are your feelings about dinosaurs there, Adam? Um, well, I mean, how can you not love them, right? They're these... Incredible. Um, almost hard to believe that these things actually roam the Earth that we're on. Um, they're incredible, yeah. Uh, the T-Rex, obviously the Chinsosaurus. Change Salas, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I'm not as good as you. Um, <laughs> but for me personally, um, Jurassic Park was actually the first film I ever saw at the cinema right, uh, wow. when I was eight, so I'm making myself a bit older there. Um, my sister smuggled uh, some prawn cocktail crisps in with, with us to eat Ooh. them. Um, and that was, yeah, that was the, the first film. So to then, after all these, not too many years, just a few years, after all these years to... Uh, actually be able to work on something that's, you know, sort of tied in with the franchise and Jurassic World is, is quite, quite incredible. Dinosaurs aside, right, you know? I mean, absolutely. I mean, dinosaurs aside, but also... Dinosaurs, dinosaurs. from the centre. Yeah, yeah. Dinosaurs at centre yeah, as well. Absolutely. And from the dinosaurs that have been announced so far, mm. would you say you have a favourite? Yes, I have. I think uh, I make it pretty clear every day that it's definitely the Amargosaurus. <laughs> Definitely. The Amargosaurus. Yeah, it's a new, new favourite since, uh, since working on this one. Um, yeah, the Amargosaurus, it's, in, it's an incredible gentle giant, isn't it? You know, it yeah. looks really friendly, um, but it's got these great big rows of spikes down the back, so you kind of wouldn't want to mess with it. Um, so yeah, really, 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 um, really pleased with how that one came out, as with all of them. I mean, I'll be honest, if I was to meet any dinosaur, mm. uh, I probably wouldn't mess with it. No, no. no. It's probably not ideal. No, 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 none of them. No, it's not. It's not. A, it's not. A, it's not a smart We've seen way. the films. Yeah, we've you know? seen. We've seen. We the see films. what happens. It's not. We it's know not what advised. happens when you mess with them. Yeah. That's very true. I'd also just like to quickly point out that Amy is. All, she does look friendly, but she also is friendly. I think uh, Andy threw friendly. a bit of shade on her there, and I just want yeah. to back her up there. She is still friendly. She so just knows how to kill a goat. We love Amy. She's fantastic. She's super <laughs> friendly, and she's incredible at what she does. <laughs> Uh, so is Andy as well. He's a so is Andy. Guy, Andy's he? incredible yeah. at what he does, and he's super friendly as well. Yeah. I'm I'm going to give a blanket statement that uh, is has been completely true. That everyone's friendly. Everyone's friendly, and everyone's yeah. amazing on the team. It's um, anytime I need information or I'm looking for some help, I can message anybody working yeah. on Jurassic World Evolution yeah. Two, and they will all help. Yeah, at absolutely. any moment. It's it's fantastic, and yeah. obviously, likewise, I'll do the same for them yeah, of as course. well. Um, and he said it before, it's, a, it's an absolute collaboration between all departments right. that get this game to where it is now, you know? Absolutely. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, but there is one man who we haven't introduced yet on the stream. We haven't, no. We haven't, <laughs> and we're, we're about to. So, um, some of you may know uh, you this know person. You all know this guy. This is who Adam was referring to earlier. And between myself, Adam, and our mystery final guest, <laughs> Uh, we will all be showing you the live gameplay and talking about it as we go. So we're going to flip the camera over to our guest who is sitting uh, ready to play. Um, and there's Rich Newbold. So Rich, welcome to the stream. Thank you for having me. It's slightly weird, I'm like just away from you. Feels like, you know, it's like, let's go to LA yeah. where Rich <laughs> Newbold has got the latest gameplay. Yeah. But you're actually my just little, there. My little desk is quite nice. Quite nice. The chairs doesn't look as comfy as your sofas do. 
Okay. Our sofas are, are they're pretty comfy. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, they're pretty good. Absolutely. Mm. Um, I can be anywhere with the green screen. We could put me on like a tropical beach. It's where great. would you want to be? If you could be anywhere, right where would here. you want to be? Oh, it would you. just be right here with you. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> right here with us. That's pretty no, good. Adam. <laughs> oh, with Adam. <laughs> well, so we've only got one guest now on the stream. Uh, <laughs> we've gone down. Rich uh, is no longer welcome. No, I'm kidding, of course. Uh, Rich is incredibly tolerable. So, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Rich is, of course. That's on um, the LinkedIn profile. <laughs> he's, of course, absolutely wonderful as well. Um, so, I would say, Rich, if you could give us uh, a little bit of an idea of what you do as the game director for those of you who haven't seen you on the stream before. Yeah, so I'm the, the game director, so it's kind of, I hadn't described it in kind of, lofty, it's, it's my vision, but it's not, I'm kind of uh, the, the man at the top, the boss man is what we call me. Boss know, man rich. Mocking way, but it's, I'm the one that um, kind of dis has <coughs> ultimate say on what we do, what we don't do, working collaboratively with the, a very talented design team and the rest of the development team about what we're going to put in the game and what kind of direction we're going to take with everything. And then I report up to the, the execs at Frontier about what we're doing in the progress of the game. But kind of me and Adam work collaboratively, as Adam says, it's his, it's his role to get the game shipped. It's my job to kind of push, push him as much as I can for as much in the game as possible. But we work together to balance the risk and all the changes and uh, try and make it as best as possible. It's a, yeah, we work as a team. Yeah. Bringing you an amazing Jurassic World experience. <laughs> bringing you an amazing Jurassic mm. World experience. Um, absolutely. So I think what we can probably look to do now is the moment that many have been waiting for. And yep. that's start having a look at a little bit of, uh, of gameplay from Jurassic World Evolution 2. So before <laughs> we start, I just want to uh, let everybody at home know a couple of different things. Um, this is an in-development build. Uh, this is, of course, meaning that there might be some things that are different from in the final game. There might be some bugs that we encounter, um, because that's obviously the nature of uh, development as we go. But we also, we were looking at this and we wanted to make sure that we could show as much as possible mm. to everybody at home. So we've created a version here which is, uh, allows us to show you even more. So we'll be able to have a look at, uh, of course, some basic parts of building your park. Mm -hmm. But we've also created it in such a way that you'll be able to see some aviaries and some lagoons today. Yeah. So you can see some flying reptiles and some swimming ones as well. Uh, so just to be clear that we have uh, created this version so that we could do this for you mm -hmm. um, and that this is an in-development version of the game. Uh, but. I think we can we can get started, Rich. Like the microphones, just forgive us if it all falls over. Yeah, yeah. it'll be all right. Yeah, it'll be fine. I mean, we'll you'll get, get really it. familiar with the back soon screen if that happens, <laughs> so it's OK. Um, I'll start singing. So I'm over so here driving, which is why I'm in my separate yes. area, because I'm the, the man on the decks. So but we've got so. Rich in the studio with us, so you'll be able to hear him all the time. Um, but of course, uh, as he'll be focusing on playing the game for you all, um, we're going to be the ones who are chatting with you mm. and that you'll be able to see in the corner yeah. and uh, we'll be helping point out the different bits and pieces. So, should we do some challenge mode gameplay? I think so. I, I think that's I think the right so. thing to choose. Because that's the plan. Because that's that the script. <laughs> that's the plan. And I think that's what yeah. we should stick yeah. to. I'm proud and of I, you I guys love, for reading the plan. That's I love challenge mode. Uh, it's, the, it's yeah. the mode that I really enjoy playing the most. Now, I did with Jurassic World Evolution 1 as well. It's, it's a mode that I really enjoy because the challenge is it's, it's a simple challenge, and we say the word challenge a lot. It's just make a five star park, and we have different right. difficulties. So we have easy, medium, hard, and Jurassic. But in Jurassic World Evolution 2, we've modified things slightly from within the first game. So there are different levels, we have different um, conditions now. So it's not just about building a five star park. In each level, there's going to be different conditions, as well as the different level itself, different calamities, different environmental challenges um, that you might have to deal with. We have different conditions now. So you might have levels where there's no herbivores. There's no carnivores. We've artificially made research and salary more expensive. Um, in some levels, there's no building upgrades available for you as well. So in Jurassic World Evolution 2, for instance, the storm defense, instead of being its own building, is now an upgrade. Yeah. In that challenge mode level, you won't have access to that. So we've, we've tried to come up with new ways to make each challenge mode level unique and different. We're really hard on that. And also that each difficulty um, is difficult as well. And we have different um, things that you have to deal with. So 
It's we try the hardest. I was talking to Dan Davies the other day. Right. Um, I wasn't on Jurassic World Evolution. But, um, obviously, we had the, the Jurassic difficulties and the challenges there. And uh, they were quite upset at how quick some of you got through <laughs> some of the challenges. So this time round, we're just going to throw loads more at you and really mm. try and, you know, make it, make it that uh, tricky top. Exciting thing. But no to doubt play. someone will just uh, cruise right through it. But we'll of see. Course, but Which still always... Rich can do it, of course. It'll all be very, very so exciting um, either way, whichever difficulty. It does mean that oh, for yeah. it's tailored anybody to how you want to play. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. For, uh, no I'm in easy mode. I'm straight, straight on the easy mode. Straight on easy mode. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm more of a player. I'll go for that um, Jurassic mode mm. and then I'll realize that uh, okay. uh, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll <laughs> restart over restart. on easy or medium and uh, sort of start from there and work my way back up. Yeah. It's good, you, so, do, you know, you do you, you do, you do, you play it how you want to play it, right? Absolutely, it's and it's great that, that we've got that ability in there for yeah. everyone as well. Yeah. You made it. So, um, as you can see, we're in the development so build, and on this challenge mode, we're in Canada. Yes, one of the um, various locations. Uh, we're no longer, um, you know, sort of on just the five deaths now. It's uh, with with the, the events of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, we're, we're taking a look at some of North America in this in this game as well now, uh, and as we are here, we're in we're in Canada in one of the uh, Tiger, Tiger. There's a there's a question. Yeah. Tiger or Tiger <laughs> um, environments, um, which obviously is a very very different situation to uh, to the tropical islands. So straight off the straight off the the, the bat, it's a, it's a very different different environment and place to be. And seeing these Usually. dinosaurs um, in the in this location is quite quite impressive. Yeah. It so, is, and it gives us all of these new uh, new challenges. Uh, yeah, yeah. See. With with the different environments come different um, potentially different weather calamities and different weather challenges that you Absolutely. you may have to face as a player. So, yeah. so I think to start with, uh, if we can move to the we'll move to the full screen view. So you'll still be able to hear us at home. Um, but uh, Rich, do you reckon you could give a little explanation on how you're starting your park and uh, what you've got there in the bottom right corner? So. Down here we have, um, this is the first challenge level, so we've given you some suggestions of how to start making money. Obviously the objective is to make a five star park, and the, idea, the way you do that is to build a park that is making lots of money, has lots of dinosaurs, and your guests are really happy and comfortable. Um, so we're just gonna give you some starting objectives just to get the ground going, ground going, get the ball rolling. Get the ball um, rolling. Get the ball rolling so you know what you're gonna be need to do, learn the basics so that you can then build on that to get to five stars. Um, and the first thing you're gonna need in a dinosaur theme park is some dinosaurs. So we're gonna build a couple of buildings of building the basics of making some dinosaurs. And we need two key buildings to begin with. We need one which is the expedition center. So um, you're gonna use this building to send expeditions around the world to collect dinosaur fossils from various uh, dig locations. And what we need to do is make sure this building is connected to the rest of our facility, to connect it to the arrival point. We use this as kind of like a hub building, so all the buildings need to connect to it. I think also um, I'm going to rate your park at the end of it. Ooh, I want to. I think we should all two. rate it. The we game, can give it individual uh, rating. The game already does that, but cheers. Well, we can no, give it a rating. I think it's, well. uh, it's, a, it's a stream rating. I think okay, the chat cool. may, may even give it a, I a think out that's of five a great as well. Idea. I think uh, <laughs> chat. We're going to yeah. ask you at the end uh, of the stream to give Rich's Parker I, rating I and can't see wait. what you think. I can't yeah. wait for the comments about the game director can't play his own game. I'm yeah, I would also. Yeah, I'll, give you, I'll give you a little caveat there because I do. I do feel you on that one. It's a very different situation when you're playing your own game on the live stream. We're going to be all, right. all of it goes out the window. And, uh, yeah. It's going to so, be fantastic. But I'm going to put you under a bit more pressure as well because uh, you know. Thanks, man. That's, Team. You're welcome. Um, so. Um, the buildings in Jurassic World Evolution 2 also need power, so in the sequel we've um, added um, a bit of some new buildings to the power system from the, the first game. So in the first game you would build a power station and use um, substations to share that power to all your buildings using pylons. So what we've added is a, a new building type called the backup generator, which is there to act as um, a parachute for when your power stations get sabotaged or they need rebooting or um, they're damaged in a storm. So the backup generator is kind of there to supply power when your power stations go down, but it's also kind of the starting um, set of power buildings you're going to need and you use before you research the, the kind of more concrete power stations. So um, let's get some power. So let's get some park. power. So make sure we put this one here. So uh, as you were mentioning, the next steps are making sure that we can 
get straight on to getting a few dinosaurs in the park as well, right? Yeah. So whilst my expedition centre now has power and is connected, so we're going to send out an expedition team to collect some dinosaur fossils for us. Mm -hmm. um, I always like this Juthiomimus. It's just a very good foundation, good, basic good dinosaur. safe dinosaur to yeah, start with. If start dinosaurs with. can be safe, which we know they're not always well, they're safe, not always but safe. I'd rather... I think I could last 10 minutes with a fist fight against a Shrufia Mimus <laughs> than a T-Rex. Yeah. So if, mean, it's, if it's going to break out, why? I'll, I'll give it a go. I mean, that's true. A T -rex it is, is like an ostrich though, and they're big. So I take it back. <laughs> yes, but a T-Rex is even bigger, I yeah, think. that's true. So we're, you know... Maybe it would be a war of attrition against the Shrufia. I mean, luckily, it? you can build things like shelters um, and are encouraged to do so yep. for your park guests. Guest comfort is important as it's well. Yeah, It's hugely important. important. It yeah. is a theme park, so Rich is rightly kind of starting with the dinosaurs. I tend to start with the dinosaurs as well because you can right. get the enclosure set up, kind of bed them in, make sure they're okay, make sure they're comfortable, make sure that they're not going to break out, you know, yeah, of course. and then kind of turn your attention to the guests because, you know, any successful theme park needs to look after your guests as well. You, you need bit, to make sure that there's thirsty. Uh, an attraction, oh, yeah. which is, of course, the dinosaurs for them to come to. Yeah. So what you can see Rich doing right here is getting the first oh, hatchery. Oh, here we go. Something, um, something's turned up. And, uh, yeah, something has happened there as well. So we have these little events that can sometimes, you know, pop up. And um, as you saw, Rich was just placing down a building. So it's kind of tied and in contextual yeah. to what was happening in game. And, um, you know, they do have uh, um, effects as well. Like, you, it's a multiple choice, as you saw there. He yeah. could either, I think it was a building material one, so you could either um, keep the excess building material if you had damage or repairs to make. Yes. And you can sort of funnel it into that. Um, or you can get the money back if you need to. So depending on the situation yeah. where you are, obviously I think he, he took the money back, which makes sense because he didn't have anything to uh, you got to a lot repair. of choices and yeah. they can take you mm. in these different yeah, so directions. Yeah, so it's just little kind of... Um, they give you a little bit of colour while you're while you're playing through the, the the challenge. Absolutely. So you see, he's got his his expedition team oh, back. has come back now. So he's going to head over to the science centre. So, so the science centre um, gives us a couple of things that we can have a look at, and one of them, as you can see right now, yeah. being um, <coughs> the fossils. Mm. And, the and on the face of it, it's you know very um, people will be aware of what this screen. If you play the first game, but there are some changes here as well, aren't they, Rich? Yeah, so um, in Jurassic World Evolution 2, we now have um, an extraction slot, which means you can queue up multiple fossils at once, or most fossils and minerals, and then you extract them all as fossils. Mm. And, and the on the face of it, it's, you know, very... Um, people will be aware of what this screen if you play the first game, but there are some changes here as well, aren't there, Rich? Yeah, so um, in Jurassic World Evolution 2, we now have um, an extraction slot, which means you can queue up multiple fossils at once, or most fossils and minerals, and then you extract them all in one go using your scientists. Um, it allows you to then kind of choose which ones you want to do, and I think yeah. um, as you're doing, as you go through the building upgrades paths, you can get some more uh, more slots, and you can extract more fossils at once. So I'm going to do all of these in one go, sign a scientist, the scientists, the, the new system that we've added for the game. So um, as your, every part of creating a dinosaur will use your scientists, the people that you can hire and you have to pay salary for, so you can have to yeah, then balance whether you want to hire more scientists, um, which is a lot more of your money, or keep the ones you've got and train them up. Um, they have three different, um, sorry, green. you have the three different proficiencies. Yes. Uh, one is welfare, one is genetics, and the other one is mm. right logistics. There. Logistics. That's the one. I always it's forget logistics. that one. Um, and then they also have their own traits. So, for instance, um, Travis uh, has cheaper research. So if I use him on a research task, it's going to reduce the cost of that down by 30%. So these are comb combinations of different uh, members of the scientist team can be used in different yeah. ways. So um, I'm just going to put them... But yeah. honest, you, you can get. also, yeah, so what Rich is doing here is he, each task has a, like a, a maximum slot of scientists yeah. you can assign. Too many cooks, spoil yes. the broth and all that, so you don't want everyone piling in. Of course. But you can, if you have um, spare scientists to free up for tasks, you can reduce um, kind of the, the duration of those tasks by adding more people on. Absolutely. So that's like another kind of balance and lever that the players will can, want can to use to have to, yeah. more scientists yeah, on exactly. a project but yeah but then you're not going to be able to manage. research another thing or something yeah. like that so you can either kind of get some parallelization 
I have to say that word a lot in my uh, job and I can't. Um, or it's a bit more sequential with, with yes. piling people up. So yeah, you so, can, it's course, a great addition. Add more scientists to your roster as well. Yep. Right yep. now, Rich um, is doing is going to be absolutely fine with the scientists he has available to him. Um, that's quite a, that's you, quite an enclosure as well. It is quite the enclosure. So I'm uh, historically, and it's, it's a running joke with me in the design, really bad at making <laughs> nice looking enclosures because <laughs> I'm not an artistic type, you could say. So my attitude to fencing is basically click, 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 click. That looks about right. So I've made an effort to use the curve the curve toggle for once in my life. <laughs> um, I'm very much right angles and things like this. Like that could have been nicer. I know it could be nicer, but so it's I a just, trademark now, though. You know, I know you, if you go to a, a rich new bold Jurassic World say, park, you know you'll, know, you'll, you'll know, know what it's going to look design like. Approach. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, I noticed um, somebody in the chat uh, noticed. I noticed that they noticed uh, that the fences aren't instant. No. So there's um, a kind of, yeah, one of the, the, the updates to, to, to fence construction is that it is now um, in sequence to how you've placed it, yes. as opposed to just being instantly there. So, you know, adds uh, another little thought, a little bit of extra um, management layer of how you construct your park and how you lay it out. Can so you can see here, uh, Rich has taken time to build his um, unique looking enclosure. Um, <laughs> We also wanted it to be um, add more a, a layer of complexity for when a dinosaur did get out. So that mm. in, in Jurassic World Evolution One, you could kind of very quickly fence them, fence the the situation away, and you kind of deal with it that way. But now you don't have that. You, you don't have that easy out of yeah. quickly building a fence around an escaped dinosaur now because of the time. There's a chance they're just going to move away from where you put your fences yeah. in, so you're going to have to deal with them with the ranger teams and the capture team instead. So Absolutely. it's um, but yeah, it was one of those things that we it's. It's a bit of a, we like the way it looks as well. It kind of feels um, that you're building things like you do yeah. with the other buildings. They, yeah. they take time to construct, so that we do the same with the fences and the paths as well, do it in a little bit yeah. um, of a way, but it also kind of means that you're more challenged as park managers to deal with the, the, any of the dinosaurs escaping. So I think I now have a lot of Struthiomimus genome, so I'm going to synthesize and incubate a new dinosaur. So we're going to use the, the new two-step process, the synthesize and incubation. Um, create a new dinosaur. So we have our fossils, we've extracted that dinosaur DNA, that amazing dinosaur DNA, and now we're going to make a dinosaur. Amazing. So while Rich is uh, beginning the process of making a dinosaur, yep. I just want to uh, quickly let everybody at home uh, know what we're doing here today. So we are currently uh, in the middle, as you can see, of a uh, gameplay for Jurassic World Evolution 2. So welcome everybody uh, to the chat that I saw just filing in there. Just to let you know, that's what we're doing today. Uh, a few people asking about the build. This is an in-development build, um, so it is not the final version of the game. And so therefore, there might be some bugs, there might be some small issues, um, but we've also adjusted this build so we can show you as much as possible during the stream. So we've made it so we can get to things like Avery's a little bit faster and uh, made it a little bit easier to do some of the research so that we can show you this as quickly as possible because we know uh, after all of your incredible comments that you want to see all of this live so we're trying to do as much as we can for you today um, so right now we're in the midst of creating our first dinosaurs in our park and it looks like Rich has chosen the Struthium Mimus mm. for that and he's already uh, gone through one of two steps now so in Jurassic World, it was just the one kind of incubation step and release your dinosaur. Whereas now what you have is a chance to uh, synthesize a clutch of eggs. So um, you have a chance, depending on the species, of actually releasing more than one dinosaur at a time now, which is a, 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 massive, a massive update. During the synthesization, it's not even a word. Synthesis. During the synthesis of <laughs> the eggs, that's at the point where you have chance to um, make any tweaks to the genome, so we can now look at some of the traits which are new for Jurassic World Evolution 2, which I think Rich had a quick look at yeah, um, when he was building these. Maybe we can have a look at it later as well. Um, and we've also categorised them, so it's a bit easier for players to understand what they're going to change and how that will then affect the dinosaur's behaviour, because it does have an effect. Uh, and he's now he then went on to incubate those eggs, so actually um, warm them up, get them ready for maturity, and then release, which and is I where we are now. We have two, and we have two options. Two oh, Tim, you're good. You you oh, see all the options, don't you? Nothing gets past you. No. Yeah, I had three eggs uh, after the synthesis stage, so I, I picked the two that had 
the most traits. Right. Um, I, I left one behind, but that allows me to, if some of the eggs have manifested traits that are negative, because there is a chance, depending on the genome, that some of the traits are negative, you might not want yes. that kind of dinosaur in your park, um, whether it's, um, it might be a sickly dinosaur or one that becomes really thirsty, but you can pick the ones that you want to kind of incubate and then bring out, so. Yeah. Let's release our first dinosaurs. So there's two, oh, yeah. So that's uh, that's the example of uh, more more than one, obviously, because there's two. So I think um, this leads on to one of my yes. my favourite things. Um, I mean, you know this Seeing because I constantly say I love this part of the game. This is the very is, um, of when the different dinosaurs the of the start finding their space mm. and their territory. Yeah, yeah, and finding out. What can we do to make them more comfortable? Which yeah. areas that are in? Yeah. Do we want them to find it outside, or are we going to fulfil their needs within it? Yeah. So the territory system—it's I love it. Yeah. So you can see um, we're built that they're building, not we're. It's the Gallimimus. Yeah, they're, they're walking yeah, around the, the enclosure, Struthia. and there's Struthia, Sorry, and they're starting to um, seek out the things they need. So Rich has got one of them selected. You can see under the environmental needs, they've got obviously a, a need for water, as yeah. most animals do. Ground leaf, which is part of the paleobotany system, which we could talk about in a second when he starts to paint that down, or he's doing it now, but we'll come back to that. We'll come back to I that. Can't, I can't go that quick. That's okay. Um, you're all, you're and also, all the uh, they have a forest need. Obviously, some sort of animals like to shelter and kind of be able yes. to hide and, and feel good. So they're seeking this out within the area they're allowed to kind of move within because yep. he's put them within this enclosure. And you can see that's highlighted with the, the, the blue uh, UI there. He's clearing some space just to... Um, place down these leafy climbers. Now this is part of the paleobotany system. Herbivores are now fed through these plants that he's placing down. So yes. there's no herbivore feeders anymore. That's actually based on um, some research into prehistoric plants that we've actually had a look at here at, at Frontier Towers and then brought them back in our kind of imagination um, or reimagining them for the, for the 21st century. So. They needed um, ground leaf. The leafy climbers provide some ground leaf because, of course, they're quite a, a short dinosaur. You might find that the brachios will need tall fibre or tall nuts or, or something um, along those lines, which will then, when you're nice using the brush that provides that, you'll, you'll notice that there is a, a, a difference in the model. It's not just yes, um, kind of a, 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 a And you've a got to make game. sure that they all they stay, stay fed and they stay happy yeah, uh, within exactly. their new residential areas. Exactly, residential areas, exactly. Once they're in their... In their in their grand estate. Um, so I did notice uh, one quick comment in the <coughs> chat mm. uh, mentioning that it's really great that you can release two dinosaurs at once. Yeah. But you can actually release more depending on it the depending on the species. Lunch. Yeah. Depending on and, and that's all dependent on the species. So there's no again we're trying to make it as sort of natural and realistic as dinosaurs that were 65 million yeah. plus years ago were. But you know it's all about building a world that's believable. So depending on the species, you you you'll perhaps get smaller um, clutches. Um, but yes, it is possible, possible to release more than one. And as we were talking before, uh, you'll notice, you, we'll notice there's two options there. You can release it, or out of the, the dinosaur, straight out of the hatchery into the enclosure, uh, or you can build your little airlock system that I used to do on the first game as well. <laughs> but we also have the option to um, release via airlift now. So uh, instead of having to kind of try and figure out multiple hatcheries and things like that, you can use the airlift option and then place them into another enclosure within the park. So that's a, that's, a very um, nice little quality of life update. I there. admit that's definitely one that I use yeah. consistently. I've used it a lot. Yeah. I've got my When money's a bit tight and you don't want to buy another hatchery but you've got enough for it's, enclosure. It's super useful for, uh, for me it was more the um, scientist resources and having them available. I didn't yeah, want exactly. to have yeah, more you than don't, one hatchery. Exactly that. You don't uh, tie so it them worked up. out yeah. brilliantly that I yeah. could create these different areas, get them ready in advance. Mm -hmm. And then airlift, uh, especially with the more carnivorous species. Yes. Yeah. I was making when you sure don't want to, to risk them. any yeah. kind of uh, um, fights or anything, then then absolutely, it's a, it's a great option. You can see these these guys have, have built quite a, a big territory. Yeah. Um, I think Rich has done a pretty good job at making sure they're nice and content. Yeah. Everything's yeah, perfect. Yeah. I've tried to put the I'm put the water over here, and I'm gonna put the viewing gallery, so they'll they're more likely to be in the viewing gallery's cone, so the I guess you can see them. So yeah, exactly. So kind of like, yeah, absolutely. It's a very important part of managing your park is to ensure guests can see the dinosaurs. And you saw there that as they were walking over to that area, the territory was getting bigger. Over time, it also decays, again, like a natural animal's There's a territory. Flow to it, they yeah. have to kind of keep on top of, of, of their area. So these, you're, as you play and um, 
uh, watch them, you'll see that the territory starts to shrink if they don't if they're not particularly interested in the area over time, um, and then they'll kind of uh, ensure that they've got the area that they want. Every species has a kind of general size of territory that they're happy with. Yeah. So you have to be careful to make sure your enclosure is the right size that will actually make sure they're comfortable. Just saw another comment from the chat from Blue Phantom on Twitch mm. uh, saying that they, they love the, the UI and the colour of the UI and how it all fits with the map. And yeah. It's just uh, a lot of love for the, uh, the, the UI the, in the, the game. The UI designers and developers have done an incredible job at um, conveying an awful lot of information. You know, it's not easy no. managing a park. Certainly not easy managing a park full of dinosaurs. There's a lot of information that we need to get across to the player very quickly and easily. And I think... Um, yeah, they've done a they've done an incredible job, but still keeping it within that Jurassic World evolution feel. You know, you, you're you're at home when you come from the first game, or if you come here from you know from nothing and you're going to come straight here. Everything's kind of laid out as as uh, logically as we we think we 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 can. You know, I'm going to make some more Struthio Mimuses. We're going for more Struthio Mimuses. Struthio Mimuses. I think it's Struthio Mimuses. I had a long conversation uh, with several These are members. the conversations you have in game development. <laughs> I had a long conversation about how you with several members of the Mimus. Jurassic World Evolution 2 <laughs> team about do we call it like with S's or I or what yeah. is the pluralization yeah. and um, we settled on like Struthiomimuses, Stegosauruses, Brachiosauruses, Rather so than, very uh, quick, sorry to interrupt you, Tim. You can see here the batch size that, that, that um, in the initial step has actually created quite a few. However, you can see now there's actually only four viable eggs that have gone through. So that synthesis stage does have a, a chance to not perhaps be able to pull all the, the eggs through. And then Rich can check the traits there in the bottom uh, right-hand corner. And if he's made any cosmetic changes, there's, there's quite a little uh, an update to some of the cosmetics that you can um, apply to the dinosaurs now as well. Um, and he now needs to get his scientists applied, being careful of those two bottom scientists I was just there. About was to a, say, there's a bit a of a red of... warning there, Rich. What was that all about? So, the scientists, as you give them tasks to do in your park, will build on rest. So, um, kind of a bit like in Jurassic Park, the movie, when Nedry kind of, I know that was, he wanted more money, but the, the idea <laughs> that we've, we've used for organizations is that you're giving your scientists more tasks to do. They build up this um, unrest value, and when that hits a certain point, um, there is a chance that if you give them another task, they will become disgruntled. And if they're disgruntled, then there's a chance of more sabotage appearing in your park. So the way I can mitigate that is to have more scientists so I can spread the work out mm -hmm. and then have a rest, uh, a staff center so that I can rest them. So I think um, a staff center is a good idea. So yeah. I've been, so whilst you guys have been talking, I've got, Coke. I got that staff center ready. Get so that's another down. new building, isn't it? Um, that, that come along with the... Uh, with the, the scientists, scientists yeah. yeah. You don't need it to have scientists, but as you were saying before, Tim, if you have a, um, a staff centre, then you have access to be able to hire a few more scientists yes. as well. You can also, of course, upgrade that building as well. They look so great. Look at them. There's a whole new world for them. And these guys will now join their territory with the other ones that should be yeah. on here as well. They should just so they're, they're enough as a, a group of four. Yeah. Yep. So where were we? We were. So you got a viewing platform resting. there, really, or you got a viewing gallery? Yes. So I say, yeah. I've you know. got half, I've got seventy-five percent of a star, which isn't enough. So just for those who've joined, there's a couple of questions in the chat uh, mm. about the game and when it's available. So that's actually. Oh, I don't know when is it available. Oh, Tell us, Tim. Oh, thanks, Adam. It's a really good question. Yeah, it's a good uh, question. It's available. Jurassic World Evolution Two on November 9th, and it is available for pre-order right, right now. now. And oh. even with a deluxe edition mm -hmm. as well. Just have uh, lots, of, uh, lots of extra goodies in there. Yes, there's extra vehicle skins yep. and uh, dinosaurs, dinosaurs. And reptiles. And reptiles. Of course. Flying reptiles, marine reptiles. Yes. Um, so it's available November 9th. What we're doing here today um, is showing you with a in-development build, as you can see there in the top right. This is not the final version of the game. This is actually one which we are using today to try and show you as much of the game as possible. So we're going to be playing, as you can see, building a park uh, with my wonderful guests, Adam Woods and Rich Newbold. And then we're going to be, uh, hopefully, 
making it to see the Averys and the Lagoons as well before the end of the stream. And that's why we've got this specific build today can so we, that we can, can get we, there. It's so it's bad. You're doing brilliantly there, Tim. But can <laughs> we just have a look at what he's just done there? It's so bad. I tried at one point. I tried at one point to make a really What's nice What's the umbilical point? cord between the two bits? Um, it's so that everything's connected. <laughs> but <laughs> why have I got this? Bit? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, why did I do that? It's brilliant. Um, it's lovely, Rich. So one of the this is one of my new favourite things we added um, yeah. is a mul is like a bulk demolish tool, so I can um, just remove all my fences in. I want to get rid of in one go. Um, oh, you you it. you were building it like that so that you could show the feature off. Well done. Sort of yeah, exactly, exactly. He's very he's clever. He's smart. He's, he's a Newbold. smart yeah. man. He's very rich new bold. It's all by design. Yeah. <laughs> but the the, the 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 delete brush is a very is a very good update. It's a great feature. Yeah, it's um, one of the improvements we made to a number of tools. So you can now move buildings as well. So if you click on a, any of the buildings and go to the extra tab, you can now pick up and move a building without needing to delete it and try and, and kind of do yeah. it again. So I can, if I wanted to optimize my park and move this in a slightly different place. Um, could and I'm just going to move it one foot to the left just to prove a point that I could. He is, uh, and he took a gamble because all his fences came offline there. But the Gallimimus <laughs> were happy, so yeah, they're fine. They were he, okay. he'd done his job so the, beforehand. The Gallimimus is Struthio Mimus. The Struthio Mimus are, are a, a security rating of one, so they won't break out of this fence anyway. They just if they did get disgruntled or they're uncomfortable, they try to escape, they wouldn't be able to destroy this fence. They would just keep smashing against it and they would injure themselves instead um, so rather than escaping. So yeah. there's now a kind of a puzzle element of making sure that you've got the right fence type security rating for the dinosaurs that you're putting in there as well. So yeah. um, so uh, whilst Rich is uh, creating these beautiful enclosures, and which are being rated, by the way, if anyone's joined in, don't they, forget. Are we to still rating? Them? Yeah, yeah, we're definitely. Still, it's I out mean, of five. Got we've, got, we've got to give it our own out of um, five stars. But uh, the chat have been asking um, for specifically what are people's favourite dinosaurs. So mm. we can uh, we can go with uh, with yours to start. Yeah, mine's the Amargosaurus. Absolutely, I um, big puppy. Yeah, it, it looks like it would like a little. Good little chin oh, scratch, you know, and, yeah. and, and would appreciate it. Just steer clear, like a hedgehog, I suppose. Steer clear of the spines, and you'll probably true. be alright. And then they'll be very friendly. Um, but yeah, a really nice, big, gentle giant. I, yeah, I've, I've fallen in love with the Amargosaurus. It's my new top favourite dinosaur. I mean, for me, I mean, I told this story with with Andy uh, mm. earlier uh, about that book I had when I was. So yeah. The pterodactyl ends up being one of my favourites, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I did always love going to like the Natural History Museum and yeah. seeing the, the giant skeletons there. And that yeah. was always, admittedly, D I D felt like they were D gigantic, but also I was quite small. I was, you yeah. know, I was a kid, They're, so uh, yeah, but I mean, comparatively, it was even even, even more, more gigantic, even yeah. more gigantic. Yeah, that's even what we're more. For. Science, that's what very scientific term. Yep. When I've been talking to Pete Giles, the lead, uh, or the art director of Dinosaurs, I was like, can you make it more gigantic? More. And he'd go, yep, I understand that exactly. That. How about you, Rich? Yeah. Uh, what would you say your favourite dinosaur is? Triceratops. Triceratops? Good, yeah. good old classic. It's, it's really classic. boring, and I know it's, it's not boring. It's a very, it's an amazing dinosaur. It's just I know that we have over 75 prehistoric oh. species in this game. We have so many dinosaurs, five, and it's the Triceratops. But that's because for me, it comes from a, a place of love. It was the first dinosaur that I saw in Jurassic Park. Yeah. The first time, kind of, those things that I saw well, when I was way. a child be brought to life in film, and it kind of felt real because the first time you see it, it is, kind of, they're up close and personal with it. It's sick. It, kind of, it was alive, and that kind of cemented it in as something that I really, mm. it just made dinosaurs real as opposed to just pictures in a book. Because um, you get told, are oh, these things live millions of years ago and they roam the earth and you're like, that's amazing, but it's hard as a child to really believe that. But as soon as I saw it in the film, I was like, this is alive. This is a real thing. Um, so I'm prepping for some celiophysis. Okay. <laughs> We're doing Fantastic. it again. Celiophysis. Uh, celiophysis. Well, the celiophysis and his friends. Yes. The celiophysis, celiophysis. and his friends. 
and uh, its mates. We've also got. Um, so he, here's the. Um, sorry, Tim, because we, we. No, this is. We, we didn't go over this before. Yeah, we didn't go over this let's before. Have a look so at this. what Rich is doing here is looking at the, the CDFISIS genome and making any adjustments that he wants yeah. to. Um, some of the uh, traits are, un are locked, so he perhaps need to either research more or get more genome, and, you know, kind of unlock a more understanding of the DNA that you can then tweak. And um, everything from where he's doing, trying to make it live a little bit longer, so splice it with some other DNA of other animals that, that will, uh, will help make it live a little bit longer in the park and maximise yeah. the profit of the dinosaur, because it is a theme park at the end of the day. But welfare does come... Sort of top. I mean, welfare comes yeah. first, of course. Um, and Happy he also made some or... cosmetic changes there as well. So there's some uh, sort of skin colour changes you can make and pattern colour changes. Uh, and we're trying to make it synthetic to the environment that you're in as well. So yes. it all sort of, you know, ties in with how um, perhaps dinosaur, uh, dinosaurs, animals in the real world kind of tend to... And dinosaurs you know, sort of, in the real world. And dinosaurs in the real world. Yeah. They, they are real, why not? Let's say that. Um, one of the questions that we saw come through was about can guests see through fencing? So that's a pretty good place to maybe talk about the viewing galleries and, uh, and the like, I think. Because we can, that's one right there, right? Yeah, so we have viewing galleries. There you go, we get, we get there you go. About Visibility. It. Yeah. Game's got our back. So you, the, the focus in the game is ensuring that they can see the dinosaurs. The, yes. the, the main focus is these viewing uh, galleries that Rich has already placed. We have a, a, a viewing platform as well, which gives um, obviously a, a height advantage. So you can see because some of the enclosures you, you're going to build are quite big, and um, the, the viewing cone, if Rich uh, clicks on the viewing gallery very quickly, you can see the, the, the area that, that um, yeah. guests would be able to see the dinosaurs in, if that makes sense. If you had a platform there, it could reach further into the enclosure. So you have to sort of balance. Um, to maximise the visibility of, of your dinosaurs for your guests. Uh, but you also have um, other things like tour rides and stuff that yes, will um, give visibility to that as well. As well as hotels, which I think you placed. We, I have placed you just a building hotel because I'm trying to improve. My guest comfort is low, and that's why I don't have many guests at all, which is why my park rating is yeah. not very good. So I've been researching um, hotels, shelters, and restrooms. So <coughs> we need to have more accommodation so the guests will come have somewhere to stay. Yep. We need restrooms so they can go and um, feel more comfortable. Go, go. <laughs> Are you trying to figure out what word? Do so, go so, um, and um, the last one shelter so they can feel safe. So as I'm placing this restroom, what we do is we've, we have added some more feedback so that you have an idea of where the demand is now for um, certain buildings and uh, amenity types so I can see that there's lots of demand for restrooms on this main yeah. thoroughfare between this viewing gallery and the arrival point um, because our de guest economy system is kind of destination based we like to have it so that the, the guests come in from the arrival point and they're going to a destination which means that we can have the guest economy be focused around certain parts of specific paths so they're, they're trying to come to this viewing gallery um, and that's why we know where they're going to hit so the guests aren't they're not walking towards this response facility because the guests are going to go the shortest distance to the dinosaurs that's what we want to see. Well, of so. course, I want to see the dinosaurs rather yeah. than the... Uh, I mean, as much as the, the good work that the response yeah. teams will be doing, I'm, I'm here for the dinosaurs. Well, that's, that's why I've arrived. That's, I actually put them down because our Struthia Mimus... Sorry. Struthia Mimus and friends. The, <laughs> the information that the dinosaurs have um, is time limited. So the ones that we made more recently, we can see their information um, we can see how they're going on, but the the ones that we first made, their data is now obfuscated. So it's um, we need to use the ranger teams to have a, have them periodically check the status of those dinosaurs. So we can either send out the ranger teams and go, hey, can you go scan this dinosaur for me and let me know what the data are, what the data is, mm -hmm. or I can use uh, a new building that we've added, the ranger post, which we can put that in one of our enclosures, and then we can assign the ranger team to the post and it will then periodically on a kind of patrol go to the ranger post and scan the dinosaurs in the radius of the ranger post and give me that information. The ranger teams will also replenish any feeders automatically that mm -hmm. we place in here for the carnivores. Um, so the, you know, I'll close that team and they're out. And our park rating is going up. So that's going up because our guests are a bit. slightly more satisfied. They do need an emergency shelter. So we had a question in the chat about can you go bankrupt? Can you run out of money? 
yes, you can. <laughs> and I've been doing it a lot playing the game recently because I keep buying lots, of, buying, I keep hiring lots of scientists and training them up, and then I'm spending a lot of money on salary, and it becomes that that challenge for you as a part manager. Like, actually, I'm going to fire one of these because I'm, they're costing me too much, and I'm not earning enough to, to cover that. My my dinosaurs aren't mm. um, appealing enough. Um, yeah, you have to. Yeah. You have to plan and think you know perhaps in the early game being a bit more yeah. um you know careful with your money so as celiophysis as we i can't think the, the batch size was possibly 10 i've got eight eggs but two of these have manifested a negative trait um so these ones will um skittish a bit more panicking mm -hmm. a bit more panicking they might panic a bit, a bit more, more panicky um, they're gonna i mean you could give them a shot see what happens just take them all. You're, one. Sure. You're, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the hot seat now, Tim. Well, uh, it's not my park that'll get I'm rated. Not, I'm not the one that's being... Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. On the ranger post as well, it might, might be interesting to call out that when he when Rich placed it, you, you would sin a, a big uh, circle a around radius, it. That was the... Yeah. yeah, that radius there is anything within that radius, the, um, uh, the teams will go and scan. So you could be efficient and maybe put that towards so the edge of an enclosure and it could actually cover another enclosure right. and they will go into that enclosure and then scan there. It's, it's not okay. enclosure bound, if that makes sense. It's, yeah, it's actually a, a, a diameter around the, the post itself. Okay. Um, so of I course, direct control is still there as well. Players can still jump straight into the Jeep and drive that around um, if they so wish a, to. We can have a little drive. I think we'll head on to looking at some building customization in a moment as well. Yeah, we are. I'm gonna, I've, got, I've got some guests. They're happy. We'll go for a drive. But I've got some dinosaurs, but they're not. They need some food and drink. Got a damage control center. So. I think somebody was asking to see a bit of driving as well, so yeah. it's pretty good. Also got the. So when um, Rich is in the kind of the aim mode as well, he can still control the uh, the jeep and move it around. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we added so um, the ability now for you to control and drive the ranger teams mm -hmm. and the capture teams whilst also in the back seat. Doing yep. your status checks or your repair or firing a flare. Which is quite a skill. It is a skill. It's quite a skill. Yeah. It definitely is. So, uh, the are ready. Let's release Seven. them. Seven. I'm going to, so I could have released them into the Struthia Mimus, but I'm going to use the release via airlift and put them into that really beautiful Wonderful enclosure space. I made. Okay, I'll put them in so here. So this is the delivery of the Coelophysis uh, and friends. Uh, as you can see, they'll be yeah, uh, the taxi waiting. rank. The taxi yeah. rank is <laughs> waiting to pick them up. To take them, uh, take them to their new home. Friday night in all of uh, any town. <laughs> <Friday>. <laughs> I do not know where town you used to go out in that helicopters would be on the taxi rank waiting to take you home. That would have been brilliant. Hey, the things you know, things in Yorkshire are completely different. Okay. <laughs> we uh, we got so a quick question as well from is it Zintax eighty eight on Twitch asking how many game modes there are. So we've got career mode, campaign. Uh, yes, campaign. Campaign mode. Thank you. Uh, chaos theory. Chaos theory. Uh, challenge mode, which is what we're playing today. Mm -hmm. Yep. And sandbox. Yeah. So, yeah. so four modes. Four different modes mm -hmm. and plenty to do uh, mm -hmm. throughout. For those of you who are uh, just joining us as well, um, welcome to a Jurassic World Evolution 2 live gameplay live stream. We're currently here with uh, Adam Woods and um, manning the game is Rich Newbold. So we've got Adam Woods, executive producer and Rich Newbold, game director, and we're playing the game for you today. And the version of the game that we're playing is uh, in development build, as you can see in the top right there, and uh, therefore there may be some bugs, there may be some small issues, because this is not the final version of the game, uh, but this is also a version of the game which we have adapted so we can show you as much as possible, because we want to make sure we can show everybody the Avery's yeah. and the Lagoons today, yeah. and uh, we, we've, we've on a little bit of a timer, but I reckon we'll be able to get there. Um, he's, he, Rich is doing a great now. job. He's almost at two stars. Two stars. That's Fantastic. where that's one of the changes we've made. We, we've looked at um, just reducing some of the quicker. requirements for yep. uh, getting hold and of the so, uh, lagoon and the Avery so that we can um, show them off. I'm going to start that. Exactly. I've got the research available, so I'm going to make that. I'm going to start doing the research now, and then we can do some. We can, we can have a look at the customizations yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And what you also know, what you may have noticed, what Rich was doing while you were talking there, Tim, is he, he had his viewing gallery, but it's quite far away from where he had dropped off the Coelophysis, Psy and friends and company yep. and co. 
and limited. So he put some riser. water right in front of the viewing gallery to see if he could tempt them round to that part of the enclosure. Smart. Because they're going to they're going to try and seek that water out. So that's actually a he also brilliant put a, use. a carnivore feeder near there as well. Yeah, that's a brilliant use of the um, the the needs uh, and the territory system as well. Again, yeah. Yeah. of you know that they're going to expand their territory and you yeah. know what they need within it. If they're Every happy time. where they are, they won't need to expand it. And if you need them to be in a certain yeah. space for your guests, you can place what they need there and they yeah. will make their way over because they'll, of course, they'll try, yeah. everybody might, wants you know, a nice meal. They are still animals, they might not behave as you want to. You as, can certainly uh, you know, never work with animals or, or children. In the words You're of, working with both today because animals and children. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, they, they'll, they'll, you know, there's more chance that they might then scoot over to that, that side of the enclosure. I think in the, the wise words of, of most DMs, you can certainly try. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. exactly so I've run out of power. Because Sometimes life finds a way though. Oh, oh my word. I, I hope we get there. through one stream. Um, the backup generator, because it's... Um, we should have had a sort of... Um, if counter. You could have seen which yeah. we should have, we were at counter, but you could also have a simultaneous... <laughs> Rich, Rich wants to talk properly now. Right, so the backup generator and uh, other buildings <coughs> have a limited resource now. So this one has fuel. So um, over a period of time, that will that's being used up. Um, yeah. Then refill it, and then the rain. The response facilities now have. Um, I can click on the building. There we go. Um, have fuel for your teams and food yeah. as well for the feeders. So there's there's now separate resources that you have to that's being used up that you have to then spend money on and manage as well. So. Yeah. Oh, we've got another event turning up. Ah, so, so perhaps during one of the release, injured. yeah. So mm. we've just released some dinosaur, yeah. And sadly, a handler got injured. I can, I can afford. So that. what's Rich gonna do? I the moral that. conundrum. I got, I can afford that. I mean, let's look after the, let's look after the team. So the options yeah, were, yeah. I think, pay compensation, sort or of, do nothing. you know, look after them, or they knew the risks. <laughs> 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 you know, it's, it's fine. But so he, he did the knew right the thing. Risks. He did the right thing. So we need some food and drink and. Souvenirs for our guests, so we've got some dinosaurs. There's someone on YouTube saying, cover it up. <laughs> I know. Well, Rich didn't, but you know, maybe oh, some well. people in the you know, dark, dark Rich times, we haven't quite got enough stuff, money to... And then to uh, is adding some donuts. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So the um, amenity buildings are now customizable, so I can, this is a food amenity, I can now customize what type of food yeah. it's selling, and then I can also customize the interior um, modules as well to maximize my profit uh, so get a preview of how well it's going to do so the interest group that is in this area is depending on the dinosaurs that are in this area so in this um, part of the park we have 40 percent standard and 40 percent nature guests and we can then tailor the food to that group and that will then change the profit so uh, it does increase the running cost of the immunity as well so you have yeah. to balance yeah. that so it's this um, figure here, that profit bar is the one that you want to keep a, an eye out in yeah. your preview because that's what you don't want to be adding lots of interior modules, but your profit's going to plummet. Um, so, and then we've got our demand has gone down, it's not red anymore, so everyone's happy that they've got lots of food here. We have 179 guests using it. And what we can do in Jurassic World Evolution 2 now is we can customize the look and feel of our immunity buildings. So, I can change between different building styles. Change the different um, roof style. Yep. So lots of different lots ways of to uh, to give it that little personal touch. And yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you, it's kind of up to the player. They can just place yeah, it down, absolutely. or um, and custom, or, or leave it, or they can customize it at the point, or they can yeah. come back to it at a later time. Um, it's just to make you know put put your little stamp on your on your park itself. We'll all know a rich new bold park by its fences and how he chooses <laughs> to uh, decorate his buildings. Yeah. We'll, we'll find out what colour he may go for in a moment. Yeah, so I can change the, the architecture. We're see the, that, that unique we rich new bold touch. The rich new yeah. bold touch. So he's done but enough with the, uh, the looks, structural changes. I've run out of power again. Because um, you didn't fill it right up. Did I not fill it no. right up? So there's two options again, oh. trying to give options to the player that are being under pressure with money, maybe you can kind of drip fill, yeah, fill up with 50 in, units yeah. of, of uh, fuel, uh, or you can spend all your money and, and fill it up completely. And put another one over there. So, where were we? Um, Going on to the flexi color. So, the trademark Rich Newbold style is shambolic. So, we're going to find that as a color. <laughs> shambolic is okay. that your trademark style? It's generally blue. That's how I okay. describe it. Yeah. Um, but no, we have different swatches. So, um, green, 
I'm just going to name colors. This is purple. <laughs> <laughs> Green. It's not Which, really uh, You can name all the colors. Uh, orange. orange. All of them. Yep. Um, and then we also have a color picker as well. So yep. if you uh, really choose the right kind of blue to for your trademark I style. I think that's the rich blue, isn't it? That's uh, the rich, blue. That's the rich blue. new bold blue. And you can save these colors off as well, so you can quickly yeah. choose um, them for your next choose them again if you want to sort of theme an area or theme yeah. certain yeah. shops. It's nice that you've got a lot, as you can see there. Um, the whole can yeah, go every, for the whole spectrum. Exactly, the whole spectrum of color is open to you, from the more vibrant greens and yellows, should we call them, to the perhaps more pastel tones as well. Whatever, whatever so, takes yeah. your fancy, you can. So I've, I've just yeah. saved. I saved off my secondary color. I've just used it again for the decorations, and I can also change the color of the lights. Yeah, so I think it's, it's really nice at night time, yeah. and you, you've got a long row of shops with all different coloured lights and things. It looks looks very nice. Looks fantastic. Yeah. You're going for, um, there's some familiar colours, that blue and yellow there. Yeah. On the donut shop. Okay. What have we got now? Philanthropy. Online petitions to fund various philanthropic causes is growing. Do I spend half a, half a mil? Half a million. But get, look at the publicity man. for you. Money, money can't, can't buy, buy well, I mean, that. Money can buy that can publicity. Buy that. It's about $500,000. Yeah. It's probably <laughs> worth it. <laughs> there you go. It's probably worth it. Uh, just for those of you, again, um, I can see we've got quite a lot of uh, new people joining this mm -hmm. stream as we go, which is fantastic. Welcome, of course, to uh, Jurassic World Evolution 2 live stream. We are playing the game live right now with executive producer Adam Woods. Hello. And uh, hidden right now off camera, we've got Rich Newbold, uh, game director who's busy playing, as you can just see. Just voice. Uh, just to let you all know, the game does release on November 9th, and it is available for pre-order right now. Uh, and this build that we're playing mm -hmm. is uh, actually in development. As you can see in the top right corner, this is not the final version of the game. Uh, because it's still an in-development version, but we've also adjusted this version so we can show you as much content as possible yeah. in the time that we've got available today. Yeah. So uh, usually you would have a lot more of a park that you'd need to be building through, but we're going to be showing you some of the yeah. stuff the community's ex very excited for. Yeah, uh, Mosasaurus is doing okay. It's okay. fine. Just, just um, keeping us on our toes, making sure it wasn't breaking out because no, it's an exactly. actual tank. I'm not sure if uh, um, you guys at home have cost a lot of money. But we have got, of course, we set up an enclosure here in the streaming yeah. studio. So With a viewing gallery. Yeah. This is basically this what is this is. This is the viewing gallery for our Mosasaurus. Um, we love her very much. There she, there, is. There she goes. You've well introduced behind. myself and Rich, though. We, you haven't introduced yourself again yet. You started yet. the stream with Yeah, but okay. with the new, pla new people enough. coming in. You're right, you're right. Who are you? My name is Tim Smith. I am the community lead here at Frontier, working on Jurassic World Evolution 2. It's great to be here, and we're currently playing whole bunch of Jurassic World Evolution 2. Okay. So Rich is up to three stars now. I've got up good to three stars. So while we're doing that uh, quick catch up for everyone, yeah. Rich has been on it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's, um, he's, he's rattled through to over three stars now. Yeah. We made some of the adjustments, as Tim was saying before, in terms of how quickly we can uh, research and unlock the lagoon pools and the uh, aviaries. The aviaries, um, yes. I'm, so uh, I'm very excited to Hence to just to try and get these. to... We know the content that, that uh, we know what everybody wants, wants to, see. to see. Yeah, so you can see we've unlocked. So Rich had to research and unlock the um, Avery Dome. It comes in single pieces, but can be modularly built up very quickly. You can see he's um, building um, quite, a, quite an enclosure very quickly there. I love on on Twitter. So we revealed, of course, yeah. uh, with the Dimorphodon and um, the Pteranodon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we immediately saw people wondering how the Averys were going to work. Mm -hmm. And someone drew a diagram for a the system. That we've, and they yeah. were like, I hope it works this way. And we are just like, you well are done. going to be well so happy. <laughs> five star when you park see for this. you. Yeah, five Absolutely. star park for you. Well done. So yeah, that modular system, like, very meaning quick, you can very spread easy. it out. Yeah, um, exactly. So, you know, you, you, you don't necessarily need to build a huge enclosure. Again, um, the flying reptiles and marine reptiles have parity in terms of needs with the land dinosaurs, so yes. they're not you know, just kind of there and they're just going to be happy. You do have to look after them. They've got space they require, so you know, you'd have to make sure that they're comfortable. Um, and you can easily build very big enclosures like that. They also come with their own um, Avery viewing gallery for the Averys and, a, and a, a lagoon viewing gallery, which is very iconic, which I we'll, we'll get, we get to, to, that. to, to see that. Amazing. Um, and with the Avery, you can 
uh, customize the the environment inside as well. So the landscape tools are available to oh, to players to to ensure that the, the the reptiles are happy in there as well. I can see uh, there was a question on Twitch asking exactly that as you answered it. So it was perfect. In tune, in tune. We did have another question from um, somebody on YouTube asking, is it available to pre-order on Xbox? Funny you should say that, person that asked that question. It is available to pre-order on Xbox. Amazing. And PlayStation. And Steam. And Steam. And it's yes. coming November 9th. So not you long to wait the, now. You uh, can get the Jurassic World Evolution 2 or the, the Deluxe, Deluxe version. With we like the extra, Deluxe Edition. Extra additional dinosaurs and goodies. I, uh, I love the, the uh, Attenboroughsaurus in the Deluxe Edition. Yes. It's, yeah. it's so Named cool. after David Attenborough. Yes. Yeah. Which obviously has a lovely link to the first it, film with Richard Attenborough. It's very it's nice. Got a, it's all this, everything's connected. Nice. It's, it's all almost connected. like it's all connected. it was chosen for a specific <laughs> Well, I love references. I love the authenticity. I just love being able to... There it is. Hey, <laughs> well, <laughs> Tim almost okay. got away with that. That's, that's, that's Richard's favourite <laughs> quote of favorite the film quotes. at the moment. There it is. So, well, yes. There it is. You heard it here. Rich Newbold's favourite quote from the entire... <laughs> Uh, look, it, look him up on franchise. Twitter and send him all the gifts. He it's, loves that um, gift. There really it is. I, don't, I, I do uh, love the quote. I just, I'm finding it, I find we're using it a lot. Um, <laughs> a new building uh, that you're so just placing we, down there. Rich. Yeah, got? so um, one of our coelophyses uh, has an undiagnosed ailment. So even though our ranger teams are giving us information, there's something wrong with it. But mm -hmm. the ranger team won't tell us that. Our medical, no, our mobile, mobile veterinary unit, unit. will which is a new team we've added um, in Jurassic World Evolution 2. So there's a new building, the, the Paleo Medical Facility, they have a new team as well. So there's a um, special medical truck that will go and diagnose and give us information about what's wrong with anything. Um, and if we have um, injuries or anything like that, the, the PMF building, the Paleo Medical Facility is a building that you trans transport dinosaurs into to fix their injuries. So if they've hurt themselves in a fight or they've hurt themselves yeah. trying to escape, um, you transport them into here to fix um, things like a broken leg. Or things Some like things can be, uh, uh, what's the word, Not fixed. fixed. What's, what's the other word? Maybe. Treated. Okay. Uh, treated in the field. They don't always have to be transported back, but certain um, kind of like major injuries probably have to safely tranquilize your dinosaur and then get, okay. them, get them back to the building looked after. So that's a nice, um, nice addition. So what are we... Oh, okay. We're going to make some flying reptiles. Yeah. Um, we have enough genome to make some. Some pteranodons. Probably go with the scientists who have uh, who have rested. That's a good shout. Yeah, I, I think I've got. You yeah. could send the others I'd to the uh, to the staff centre, right? Yeah, I, I wonder where you're going to send them then. Just like you know, just, <laughs> just, just to the, the power center. generator. Um, to the backup power I can, generator. Uh, you go. I can train them as well. So it's part of the research. Time to shovel coal. You can um, you can unlock training points, so I can now increase yeah. their. Um, Potential in any of the proficiencies, but that's going to increase their salary as well. Yeah. But doing okay for money, so. So we're going to rest um, some. Travis can have a bit more genetics. Yeah. Um, and have a bit of rest. There How we go. How is my money doing? So scientists are a new uh, layer of management that the player must look after, and they deal with all of your research and kind of creation of dinosaurs. So they, including uh, expeditions, so you have to send them out to dig sites to get the, the fossils and, and ultimately extract the DNA. They look after your synthesis and incubation of dinosaur creation, um, and they also look after your research um, tasks as well. So, very key staff members of the park Absolutely. that you have to look after. Um, but of course, it is a collaboration in the park as well. You need all the other teams to be working well as well. It's a good uh, good lesson for life too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Avery Dome's also with the the hatchery. That's what um, Rich has been using to um, synthesize and incubate the uh, pteranodons. So you don't, you don't do it in the normal hatchery, you have to build yep. a, a bespoke version of it. Uh, same with the lagoons, which we'll see in a little while. So yes, I saw some questions. I couldn't <coughs> catch the name, but people on uh, YouTube asking, yep. can they see the lagoons? Uh, yep. We are very specifically going to get to that as well. Yes. Uh, but so first, time, Tim, as a time check, I'm just going to start building the lagoon now. So yeah, we'll uh, yeah I think if you start building the lagoon now, then no we worries. can have a look at the Avery's whilst Cobain. that's building. We should be good. So a similar system to how we place down the Avery domes and also how you know, you're placing other buildings in, in the game. Uh, we're just placing down these circular pools, which can be modularly extended um, right. depending on... Um, what sort of species you're going to try and release in there? I think we all—is uh, it, it the 
Plesiosaurus that comes up first, or is it the Mosasaurus? I can't remember. I can't remember. Um, but we'll find out. It'll be yeah. exciting for us to find out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, what Which is Which is it trying to increase his um, I've realized local five star rating by making his fences look a little bit better. No, what I've realized <laughs> is that I've put it in a place that I can't get a path for. Oh, okay. ah, so you've needed yeah. to. Which is another it. infamous. But look how quickly he could modify trait. his park safely. He built an enclosure within the enclosure to make sure those dinosaurs didn't break out when he deleted the other bit. He's, uh, he's he making sure just, he's uh, on top of it. He's again tricky. is trying to get a little bit. Um, Taking Spicy on with the MVU there. <laughs> taking on the MVU. Yeah, you know. David and so Goliath. As you can see, uh, thanks to the Rich's uh, mm. incredible uh, skills as a park manager, uh, we're already at three stars. Three and a bit stars, yeah. Getting us over to the Pteranodons. So yeah. we've got two eggs available, it looks mm -hmm. like. Yep. Yeah, we had um, some traits on one of them as well, which I think you, you had done some DNA spots um, on. I no. didn't have enough percent genome okay. percentage to do a lot of modification, but so I had just one a few. Yeah. yeah. So apply as scientists, make sure they're incubated safely to maturity. Yes. Yep. And then um, these also, uh, from these hatcheries, you can also do the airlift feature as well. So now you don't have to just release them out of that hatchery. You can choose to airlift them a somewhere else. Area. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, Fantastic. I, um, we had a question. I'm going to just go and find it. Mm -hmm. Asking from Orange Soda on Twitch. Asking, can Avery's... Is that a little Kevin and Kel reference it, there? It might be, yeah. yeah. But so it's... Um, Keenan and Kel. Be... Kevin and Kel. Keenan and Kel. Keenan and Kel. It's all right. Go We're going to hold that against you forever. Yeah. Yeah. Can Avery's be broken out of? So we had a little chat with Amy about yeah. this earlier, mm. but yes is the answer. Yes, they can be. Absolutely. Absolutely. If they're not be. happy inside, they will attempt to break out. Um, and once they've broken out, they will be causing a certain amount of uh, havoc in your park and, and guests. So yeah, you need to make sure they're looked after, just like the land dinosaurs, just like the marine reptiles. You have to make sure they're happy and they've got all their needs met. What are you doing at the moment, Rich? I'm fixing this minor fracture with, with my MVU team. With, yeah, with some, but he's with some medicine. It's hiding. it's hiding, and it's it feels like a nature documentary. Oh, isn't it? It's kind bit, of yeah. you know. It's so tricky. I'm just going to use the medical team. <coughs> they can get it done for there you. There we go. They get it done for me. Right. Yeah. There we go. So we've got our <laughs> dinosaur clutch building. We're going to get again still our... being built. It takes a while. It's quite a um, pretty spectacular. Um, Structure. That's the word I was trying to say. I mean, of course, you're building a, a habitat for, for something as something incredible as, as this. That she came by just again. at the right time. Yes. Head on, Moza. <laughs> Head's good old Moza. Uh, so oh, well so we've got another event well. here. We also recently, just before then, we saw some contracts as well come up. Yes. So um, on a on a on a sort of tick at the end of a month, as it were, at the end of the game month, you have the opportunity to choose contracts which can help. Um, you know, boost your money if you can yeah. achieve what the contract set out to do. It could be increase your profitability from your amenities. It could be, um, I think there's things like you know, releasing new dinosaur species and things like that. So that can give you a little, a bit of a direction in in the park as well. You know, an objective to try and achieve, as well as uh, giving you a little, little extra in your in your in the bank balance to spend. Absolutely, should have done that. Shouldn't have done that. I was no trying to make some restaurant. more. I was trying to make some more money. Um, but by putting it there, it just wasn't profitable. So I just, I would Take have just been away. losing Were you using the, the view modes for that, were you? You could see. Um, no, yeah, it was the demand when I first went into it. So yeah. in, as Adam says, we have a special management view mode that allows you to see where your need for various things are. So yeah. down here well, is where we have high there. need for restrooms because we have that one over here. So that's fine. Um, what our guest distribution is, where our different guest types are going. Yeah. Depending on, because obviously Again, I have based one on with, what, what, how your yeah, park's laid this out. This one is a carnivore, this one's a herbivore, so they're changing, yeah. and then a need for different types. Food I do need some I could souvenirs. Think, um, it's really great with all of the information we just saw that you can really see exactly what your guests are going to need, and you can see exactly where it needs to be as well, and yeah. to have careful use of all of that information. Yeah. Um, I think oh, we've seen we a, a couple of screens. Oh, I'll be it's, quiet. Uh, there. <laughs> it's incredible. And there's our first there flying reptiles, the pteranodons. Again, they've got their territory. Um, for those that missed it, dinosaurs now have territories as well, so they, they build up territories based on what they need from, from their environment, which you have to make sure they have access to. Um, so they've got full, full uh, behaviours and, and territory like, like land dinosaurs. Um, and again, as you saw here, it wasn't one pteranodon, it was two. You know, again, with species um, 
the differentiation, they can you can release more than one now. Uh, so we just had a couple of questions. Flintlock Engineering saying, "Is that Tim I hear? It is Tim you hear. That is correct." Um, but also famous Tim, the famous Tim, uh, apparently. Thank you for the new moniker. Yeah, you're um, but so there was also a question from Saintness uh, over on Twitch. So you can see on camera. Hello, I Hello. am Tim Smith, lead community manager working on Jurassic World Evolution 2. To my right, we have Hi. Adam Woods, executive producer, also working on Jurassic World Evolution 2. Yeah. Um, so the question from Saintness was, is the game out now or still in development? Much. So much. Uh, we're all, we couldn't be happier with the reception we've been having this week to yeah. the game. Um, the game is out November 9th, so not quite yet, but you can pre-order right now. Um, if you like what you see, you can always head to Steam or Xbox or PlayStation to pre-order the game. And this is an in-development build. So as you can see in the top right corner, it's uh, saying development build, and that's because it's a development build. It's an in-development build. Development so this is not build. the final version. No. That means there may be some small errors and some bugs. Um, however, of course, there will be a final version that will be yeah. available on yeah. November 9th. And in this version, we have made adjustments to make everything go a lot faster, so we can show you as much of the game as possible during the roughly an hour that we have available to be yeah. playing today. So that's why Rich is currently um, working hard to get the Averys and the Lagoons up and running, so we can show you some more of the Pteranodons. I can see somebody named one of them Terry already. Um, and Terry, the, of course, ter the ter Terry the Pteranodon. Terry the Pteranodon. Absolutely. So, yes. <laughs> Cheeky. Tim, yeah, of course. Yeah. There we go. Brilliant. Did you? Uh, oh, I see. I've got my own Pteranodon. Thanks. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I mean, you've got to call the other one Adam then, surely. I did. There we go. There you go. Yeah. Adam, Adam and Tim. We're hanging out. Sitting in a dome, oh. and we're lonely. <laughs> Lonely is because we haven't got rich. From each other. Need rich in, um, I well. got to, so the Tyrannodons have a minimum social. <laughs> they prefer a social of at least three by the looks well, of it. There you go. There's three of there's us. There's three of us. So yeah. I got to make. I have to make another. Adam, I'm have to make another Tyrannodon. Yeah. Again, it's that so nuances happy. between species. Some of them are. Yeah. You know, they're quite. Um, what's the word? Opposite to you know. Social. Antisocial. Antisocial. Yeah, they're not antisocial and not lonely when they're they're happy on their own. They're happy on They're their solo. own. They're solo. They just wing it on their own. They wing it that on their own. That sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see what, you, definitely I see what you did there. Because they've got um, wings. I hear you. I can't I think you. of the word. Solitary. There you go. Solitary. Solitary. Can we all cut that? We're not live, are we? We can cut all that bit out. <laughs> yeah, none of this Brilliant. is live on Thanks. Twitch right now. Um, on some of them are more solitary and some of them are more social. So you have to balance that with how they're going to go into their enclosures. Uh, I wonder if you really get how Twitch works. But yeah. I don't. No, no that's okay. No. Sorry, that's what I'm here for. I, I got you back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rich needs to be careful of his response team there. We've got a little icon flagging up that there might need to be something. They're running out of fuel. Yeah. So the response team now have fuel. You need to provide them with fuel for the, for the helicopter and the, um, the cars that are driving around. And you also need to make sure they've got the supplies that they're going to go yes. and um, resupply the feeders with, the, the, the carnival feeders and, and such. Uh, and it's the same with the ex paleo medical facility. So just I'm trying to make a Mosasaur, but. Making dinosaurs is not cheap. It's not. It's going to cost us like two million it's to make that dinosaur. So all right, we're we're gonna we, we can stay here till we oh, get this dinosaur. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. So and I'm you're at I'm doing some cost. <laughs> I'm doing some cost cutting exercises. Cost cutting. <laughs> he's he's checked the budget. I've there's checked some, the budget. There's some hard decisions to be made. Yeah. And I'm sorry, Udell, you're out. <laughs> I, um, I don't, Merry Christmas. I don't need that many many <laughs> scientists at the minute, <laughs> and I would like us to get a mosasaur soon. <laughs> It's all right. So um, we are. We've, we've had. A, we've also had a breakout. We've also had a breakout. <laughs> so <laughs> definitely, 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 Tyrannosaurus can can definitely break but out. Now someone was asking like, about whether I wasn't you can lying. break out of an Avery. Wasn't it's, lying. it's happening. Yeah. And someone can, was asking, do they just fly away? Yeah, and so right now, see, there's yeah. a breakout, and okay. um, we are going to send a ranger team to retrieve uh, this dinosaur. So <laughs> this is. Definitely going down at part of the park. Tim rating. escaped first by the looks of it. I'm out of here. Yeah. I'm, uh, you can't. And I just followed. I stop me. I don't cause can't the trouble. I just have to. I sort of go with the flow. You know. I have to, don't want to rock the boat. Okay. We just saw a little guest having a little bit of trouble there with one of the Tyrannodons. <laughs> but I'm sure. I'm sure Rich will financially recover from this. Yes. <laughs> nice little. 
It's all going to be You can okay. see, though, also, they are building up the territory outside the enclosure yeah, as well. So the territory the isn't just linked to, to the enclosure. It's Absolutely. definitely outside. So there's a whole, a whole world for uh, Tim and Adam, the Tyrannodons. A whole new world. A whole new world. And uh, they're exploring it. So this yeah. is now up to Rich to... Just to contain this issue, and that is a <laughs> yeah. classic Jurassic issue that you have. You haven't, you haven't got any um, dev, dev tool magic, have you, Rich? No. On this one, because it's a final. This bit, is what happens it? when you go live. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm. I thought I, I thought they were happy. <laughs> I thought they were happy. <laughs> what went wrong? Okay, so I think. Can um, I've got another question uh, from? It looks like uh, on YouTube. It's, it's quite a long name. Griffinixaurus rex, uh, asking, can pterosaur species coexist with each other? So can you have more than one species in, a, in an aviary? Yes, yeah, certain, certain species will cohabitate, cohabit yeah. with each other in a gentle and uh, tranquil way. Yeah. Yes. Hopefully. Some won't, though. Yeah. Some won't. Yeah. Depends on who's managing the park, hey, Rich? Um, I don't know where Tim's gone. <laughs> I, uh, that's, Tim's. that's Tim's there. He's outside the. Um, there, you can't stop me. The cahoon. We're both there. We're together. Yeah. Hanging out. Are we on? I don't think you are. No. Okay, so Tim. I'm sorry. I'm out of here. That's, that's um, it. What we're going to do is make sure you that didn't realise the oh, power I don't know. I that I you mean, gave this pteranodon by giving it uh, the same name as me. It's unstoppable. I think there's quite a nice little irony there that Rich has just suffered a pteranodon breakout. So what he was going to do is release more pteranodons. It's so <laughs> I think that's like quintessentially what they, people well, keep doing wrong with Jurassic <laughs> World and Park. It went double wrong. Down. What should we do? Build another one. It's fine. Just double down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's something to say. <laughs> uh, everyone so in Holland is alive and well. Um, Someone Why saying they're very interested to see when more things go wrong. I mean, that's, hey, th this that's is, this Jurassic is, World evolution exactly, it's, too. It's, it's, you have to deal with these calamities. You know, Rich has taken his eye off the ball, perhaps. It's a very stressful situation right now. He's got yep. me berating him <laughs> left, right and centre. He's also live on Twitch, so, you know, he's, yeah, he's, make some money. he's right. got a lot of pressure on him, but he's so, doing OK. Uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll just keep going for yeah, money. for sure. I think uh, he, what we're trying to do is get to the Mosasaur. He's trying to figure out how, I think, to... Generate enough That's money. Right. Like we can, we can just carry on for um, a bit so we can get to that mosasaur. Perhaps want to just contain. Sell. Can you, if, how much do you get happening? back from the Avery domes if you sold them? We've seen that. We've seen that now. It's okay. It's not as much well, as I, I mean, we be. need the home for. Yeah, I'm trying to for Adam. I mean, Tim's gone. But Adam's a free spirit. He can. He can. <laughs> you he can terrorise the guests. Loose. <laughs> can I make any more money out of these? So he's also yeah. now checking. So what, we, what we're seeing really is, is the, the actual game loops of trying to figure out, OK, so your park may not be performing as you want it to. How can you um, better uh, extract some money from the pockets of your guests walking around? I'm so around? glad I didn't have that nightmare about me worried about not playing in my own game well on stream. It's yeah, fine. No, it's fine. It's definitely not come to life. It's absolutely fine. What? Don't know where Tim went. I'm, this uh, is I'm the... a free spirit. You, uh, you can't stop me. You're somewhere. <laughs> Development build. Who knows what's going to go wrong? Okay. It's omnipresent. I need, what's that, 840? So there's lots of information there that Rich can use to um, help guide him through this, you know, slightly stressful situation of trying to raise some money. The board are knocking at his door. Um, <laughs> lots of information there, lots of yeah. screens in all seriousness okay. that, you know, the players can um, use to find out how to to um, more efficiently run their park and, and tend to their guests and, and dinosaur needs. I think uh, selling these... Mm -hmm. Yeah, he can extract... Um, selling some minerals. That's going to Yeah, so minerals. sometimes when you're on digs, digging for the, the fossils in the ground, your team may find um, minerals and kind of, you know, some, some treasures and such like that, which can be extracted and then sold for actual money rather than um, DNA. They don't contain DNA. Okay. But that can be a nice little um, hit of money as Rich has just found out, I think. So we'll, we'll be back on track pretty soon, I reckon. Still want to spend that money on the Pteranodon, though? Yes, because, Adam, you're lonely, mate. OK. So, we um, can, I mean, how many He uh, looks after me first. I'm making two. Yeah. I'm making two, plus you. That's three. Yeah. Power of maths. OK. Um, and then they'll be happy and, and you can forget about them. Yep. One and day we'll figure Tim out where Tim went. <laughs> Tim, <laughs> we'll find Tim's out of here. One day Tim's gone somewhere. It's fine. Yep. Like we said, it is a development build. There are some bugs. It's also a slightly... Um, older development build. It's not. You yes, know, it's, it's from from a, a little while ago that we took this 
So, uh, but we want to you know. make sure we can share as much as possible, and yeah. we're gonna we're gonna keep going right now until yeah, absolutely. We get I'm it. having I'm fun. I'm excited to see Adam the Pteranodon's uh, new friends. I'm I'm guessing we can keep this theme of guests on the show today, mm. uh, so we can have an Amy and an Andy. Um, yeah, maybe maybe uh, one of the, the. I hope they're the better behaved than behave you two. Behaved than us two. Okay. Um, we're just a force of nature. Rich. Yeah, well, I mean, you know. Here so we here are. we go. So how many more? We've got two more coming out. Two more. Oh, I forgot to make them. I forgot to change the cosmetics just so we know That's that they're, right. they're, they're okay. the nicer ones. The nicer ones. So, so we've Amy, got Amy, Amy, and Andy. Andy, Andy. Andy. there we go. The park. Okay. Fantastic. Meanwhile. Tim is on an adventure. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tim, <laughs> the adventure of Tim. Uh, we will never know. Hopefully, he'll write a memoir when he's back. Okay. Yeah. And the Tyrannodon Chronicles. <laughs> the Ranger teams um, can be mm. assigned to the yeah. uh, Averys and the Lagoons, so they'll yeah. do the same job as they do in your other enclosures, but via the hatcheries. So we use those as the Ranger posts. So um, you can get information about what feeders are in being covered by it, what flying reptiles yeah. are being covered. So they will. Um, you can be asking yourself, how does that ranger team get in how there? How do they get through how a little slot? So I'll wait for one. Actually, let's Can see how the ranger team do this. I'm enjoying uh, speculations of where Tim has gone in chat. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, what's happened to Tim? Where's Tim gone? Is he gone to Cardiff? Is he? Maybe there should be like a, on, on, on the forums or something. You could go and uh, do a little Tim thread of Tim's gone. story, like what happened after this. I'd love to read that. The, uh, <laughs> the extended story of... Yeah. Tim the Tyrannodon's Tim's adventure. Grand so. Escape from uh, Park Newbold. Park Newbold. <laughs> so when this ranger team this ranger team only has one job now and that's to go to the hatchery. What's the other one to make sure that you've got no, you don't need to go to the hatchery, I've got the other you're gonna look at this one. There you go. Cool. Right. So ranger patrol posts now are, are items you can place down and then um, assign a ranger to and within a area of that post they will um, that's a bad sign. Check, um, that's a yeah, bad sign. That check any uh, welfare on the dinosaurs within that yeah. area um, to give you the information that you need to then make any informed decisions about uh, their needs and making sure they're, they're nice and happy. The Piscophor feeders, which is a horrible word for me to try and say, uh, need yeah. an amount of water because they, they are a container of fish. So, of you course. know, you have to uh, live fish, live bait for the, for the pteranodons. So here's our ranger team. Yep. But it's on the inside. So what it we is do on is it. we... On the, it is our ranger team, but it's on the inside. The ranger team send out drones. So they visit the ha the hatcheries as part of their patrols. Now the drones go around and they yeah. act as um, their equivalent. And they'll, they'll fly around doing your status checks, replenishing your feeders, Should doing we check the uh, Someone who was eating fish down there. there yep. Yeah. Oh, I am, yeah. There's Adam. That's me. You Get can normally find me eating. That's yeah. That's one of my favourite pastimes. Oh, well. So there we there go. go. Like Sometimes you said, game development, development throws builds. up interesting things. So and then, uh, and then it all recovers, and you're fine. And as you're, we've mentioned earlier, uh, just for those of you who have joined the stream more recently, we are playing an in-development build. There are a couple of bugs. Um, but this is not the final version of the game no. and it is one that we have adapted so we can show you more of the game uh, much quicker so we can still show you. As you can see we've got Amy, Andy and Adam, the Pteranodons who are being here's one happy. Of the, who are happy. So here's the contracts I was talking about before as well yes. so we, we have the option if you want to, you don't have to take them on but you can take them on as a, an extra bit of a, a challenge and then a, 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 the rewards, monetary rewards um, as well. I'm going to use that one because um, I was worried about that one. I went for that mission because I um, was worried about adding more dinosaurs to this. I'm worried about spinning any more plates on dinosaurs when I've clearly been doing a terrible job with the ones I've got. Um, <laughs> it's not easy. It's you know, you're, you're, I think you're doing. A I think you're doing a very fine. good job. I mean, the Struthiomimus didn't break out at all. It's true. So, it's true. You know, all the, the Coelophysis seems to be staying put as well. Yeah, yeah their, their territory keeps dynamically changing. So the forest I put down in this part of the enclosure that they, they originally started off over here, but because yeah. of the water feeder, the waters and the carnivore feeders, they've moved yeah. in this direction. That's actually a really good example of, of it because you can see how it's changed. How it's built. Yeah, the it, forest that yeah. was here on that side there, yeah, is just not working for them. Like, yeah, so they'll. they'll it's too far away. away from everything else. So they're kind of trying to, to, to. Trying to do a bit yeah. of They're prioritising food and water, obviously, so 
what Rich yeah. can do there is, like you say, just um, mm. paint down some more forest coverage, and to then be they're fair, happier. I also prioritise food and water. The same do I. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to go to the forest, or do you want to go to Greg's, and I go to Greg's? Yeah, it's yeah. reasonable. It's basically what I do. Okay. For all the people that actually know what Greg's is. Um, Filling up your backup generator as well, yeah, that runs on fuel, so we do out. have the whole, the full power station with substations and pylons to yes. really, um, you know, generate power. There is a full power, power. you can run there. But we also have this new way to power your your, um, your park, if you so wish, or to use as a, a, a literal backup generator if things start to go wrong. I would so like what are we researching now? to have a viewing gallery on my Avery. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so that's on, yeah, that's the one. Attraction, that's yeah. the one. And then it's the bottom one on the third row. But I need 500 but, guests yeah. in my park yeah. to get there. So, so he's looking at the research tree as it, as it were, or the tech tree, for, yeah. for a gamified reason. Um, and some of the items you can research need pre, you know, prerequisites of, of other things being unlocked or, or um, known about. And you can work your way through, and you can see all the information on the right-hand side as to what you need, as to what, what will it unlock, yeah. and also what you need to do to unlock that. And then you apply your scientists to make sure that they're, uh, yeah, they're hard using, at work. I'm using a scientist that has cheaper research and one that is faster research. Yep. So combined, it will be combined. You're yeah. going to get there a lot quicker and a lot cheaper, which yeah. is fantastic. But yep. as you can see, Rich is uh, he's. Sure, bumped up that money. He's at yeah, one point. He he so had a real he had a he had close. a real yeah. on his hands, but he stayed cool, stayed calm, Did and I he know? got it done. It's cool, calm, just like and he is. It's like he is in real I life. If there's any more steers the ship with a steady hand. I wonder if there's any more herbivores we can get. In. Captain yes. of the ship. There's the Amargosaurus. That's my so, my favourite one. Boo. So the Sheathimimus is so the dinosaur species now have likes and dislikes, which kind of are the species they were like dislike. Um, so I'm just checking what I Struthia my my she's my Mrs. liked or mommy. disliked to put in with my um, another herbivore just to get our dinosaur appeal up. So yep. I'm going to put in the Nasutoceratops um, because they'll mix together. And I think they also have the same paleobotany requirements as well. They're both like ground leaf. So, mm -hmm. so I can see some people. <laughs> There's a uh, it's L Blaster 2 saying release the Mosasaurus. We're working on it. I'm working we're, on we're, it. We're trying. We we're will, absolutely trying. We will show you all the Mosasaurus before we finish the stream today. Uh, yeah. We just, of course, need to get to a certain point in the park. Uh, even though it is a in-development build that we've adapted, mm -hmm. uh, we still need to play the game, of that's course. Yeah. Like, that's where the fun's had, is in playing yeah. the game. Um, in the meantime, uh, if we flip back, back to having back the to studio view, you'll be able to see uh, here, if you pay attention, there's our in-studio Mosasaur, who yeah. you can enjoy in the meantime. She's swimming in the background there, but she'll be background in a second. Um, and just for anyone else who is there and has joined more recently on the stream, uh, we're currently streaming Jurassic World Evolution 2. This is an in-development build. This is not the final version of the game. We uh, will have some little bits and pieces of bugs, because as I mentioned, it's not the final version. Mm -hmm. um, however, We've also adapted it to show you more. I'm waiting for our Mosasaur to turn up. She keeps going by while you're... Yeah. While I'm well, talking. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's fine. So as long as the, she's there it's the Mario she's ghost. You look away and she, yeah, she, that's okay. she swims by. Uh, but so we can show you more of the game uh, quicker. So uh, as you can see, we're moving our way towards showing a Mosasaur on, uh, on stream in the game. And the game is not available yet, but will be on November 9th. And don't forget, we are rating... Richard's. <laughs> um, he uh, has his in-game rating, but there is also going to be at the conclusion story. of the stream. We're I mean, there's all a lot give of story in this park yeah. right now. Like, there's yeah. the wild been, I've been Tim the Pteranodon yeah. is out we, there. It's been, it's been, okay, it's been a, a, an incredible some, journey so far. I need some scientists. Ironically, That's the fair. scientist that I fired earlier would have <laughs> been very useful right now. <laughs> <laughs> Redundancy is coming back, huh? Okay. Well, we're going to continue and... We're getting there. The amount of money is going up. There we go. Clearly, so we've got some, some scientists recovering scientists from rest there. there as well. We've got our Avery viewing gallery, so I'm going to build one of those, and that will definitely help. And yeah. Let's get, let's get all these people on there. So what, what Rich is trying to do is increase the attractiveness and the kind yep. of the, um, the, the appeal oh, of the oh, park, which will in turn then generate more profit. So he's spending a bit of money, speculate to accumulate, spend money to as make the money. classic saying goes. Um, that's why I keep buying Lego, because I believe that that will then come back Lego to me in, the way forward in, to in, fortune. in, in uh, tenfold when I'm old. 
You were all about the uh, rhymes for the last about 45 seconds. Was I? Yeah. Oh, wow. You I can keep going. I don't. I can't. Now I'm thinking about it. I won't be able to rhyme. I need you to keep going. So here's the, um, <laughs> here's the, <laughs> the custom Avery viewing gallery as well. So it's not just a, 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 it's not the other, the land viewing gallery. It's a whole new building that, that gets placed on the side. Oh, Rich. It's got a... Oh, I think that's... That might be Tim. That might be it? Tim. No. <laughs> okay. So that that forum story needs to include okay, so the old Okay. So we've a conclusion to the saga of Tim's, Tim's life. Yeah, I yeah. think that's Tim. Oh, so boy. what that's happened? That's fine. I'm okay with what that. What happened when Tim left the park, and how did he ultimately find his demise? Oh man. Let's see. Look, you see can them we, perching um, on the um, the can gallery. Can we get some memorial in the chat, <laughs> please? For let's 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 take a moment. R.I.P. Tim. Let's take a moment, take a moment. for a Tim the Pteranodon. Who was uh, left without support? And um, there we go. Okay, Looking good now. Some, Look, one point four mil. Viewing galleries. We're we're on the. <laughs> we're doing it. So you can see here, um, we're going to research the marine viewing gallery, which looks very, very uh, you know, it's, it's, it's looks a bit familiar, doesn't it? I appreciate. There's a lot of support in the chat for uh, Tim the Pteranodon. There's just lots of lots of Fs and RAPs. Yeah, I think. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah. For, for Tim the I think he lived his best life. When they when he left, I mean, the park, he right? lived uh, lived fast. He could have stayed in, and that would have been life would have been boring if he stayed in the. Yeah. He lives I mean, life he in just, the fast lane. We knew that he out broke out, out first of all. He lives yeah. life in the fast he was lane, out there. and you know enjoyed the Canadian okay. wildness, Excuse wilderness, Canadian wild wilderness. wilderness. That's right. Here you can see how we um, going straight back on. Yeah, we'll get back into this. We can um, stop, like, You can see the 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 two territories. So we've just released the Nasutoceratops. They have a different. Um, territory space compared to the um, Struthiomimus that's in this one. It is this one, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it is. Uh, so you can, when you're looking at it, we, we still give the player an indication of the other territory because you need to balance the two. Yes, they course. might not want to feed off the same pal uh, paleobotany plants that the Struthios do. Um, so you have to balance it. You know, you can You've create very of, uh, tricky yeah. elements to combine. Because Absolutely. Of course, if yeah. you don't meet the needs of one of them. Then you're going to have gonna a have, lot of you might issues. Have a bit of trouble. You might have a breakout. Exactly. Um, you might have some poor welfare, and your guests aren't going to want to see that. No, they want to see the dinosaurs being happy, thriving, yeah. being happy, and healthy, of course. Exactly. Uh, and exactly. we've got to a four-star rating, so we're doing oh, actually doing very well. pretty fantastic. So the other thing to keep in mind is not only you're checking that the dinosaur species are compatible, but also the dinosaurs don't like a lot of overlap. So even if you had lots of species that do that can live with each other, they yeah. might not want to live with each other. Mm -hmm. So the Nusudceratopses um, have, a, I think it's like a 45% overlap. So if their territories overlap lots, mm -hmm. they're just not going to be happy, regardless of who they're, they're living with. It's a bit like people, really. Yeah. You know, fill um, a house full of people. Even if you like them, they're just going to be annoying eventually. Right? <laughs> yeah. And you'll notice that um, it says forming territory there. It's, it's a good idea to, yeah. when you release your dinosaurs, to actually give them a moment to actually seek things out and then change it. Because if, you, if you're a bit too quick, you can end up you know, not being efficient with how I've, you're changing the I've done the, the exactly landscapes. this before. I've tried to pre-prepare yeah. the territory before yeah. they come, knowing that yeah. like, the Strukes or Mimus will exactly. want ground leaf and yeah. a bit of water. Yeah. I've, I've added it how I thought they would want it. Yeah. And then they arrive and they it decide, might be different. Yeah. I don't want that. Yeah. I want to go over here and I'm mad that you didn't add stuff exactly. to this area. Yeah, they, yeah. they, they might want to be somewhere else. So sometimes good to let them, you know, when you get a new cat or dog, you have to let it settle into your house for a little while, and then you of start course. giving it. Uh, there we go. So, so uh, our new Nasutoceratops. Oh, and here's one of our. This is without doubt my. God, I went really strong there. Without doubt. Without, without doubt. doubt. It probably. <laughs> I can't. I don't know how I can back no, from that. Without it probably doubt. is my my most favourite part of the game is this side of the dinosaurs. Like, obviously the fighting and the hunting is cool, but. Seeing more of that social yes. behavior, I think we started it with Jurassic World Evolution, where they became these animals. They're not, you know, they're they're not di they they are dinosaurs, obviously, but they're actually animals that you can sit and watch and kind of um, get get into. And it's just been extended with that. The animation team have done an incredible job at really um, showing off this personality. It's, like uh, it's incredible watching those moments just happen as yeah. well. Yeah, exactly. It's just sort of one will head to the other, yeah. and they just have these little. Uh, Interactions and whenever they feel like it, yeah, it's uh, it's incredible. There's a uh, lots of videos have come out um, since the um, pre-order announcement on Wednesday. Yes, and there's one content guy I can't remember his name on. I think it's on YouTube, who finally got to release his plesiosaurus. 
Plesiosaur. We still don't know if it's Saurus. Chat will tell me in a minute if I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, he finally <laughs> released it, and um, he was looking at it. He was really happy, and then just from back, the Mosasaur came and ate it. <laughs> oh no! I didn't see and that it clip was yet. it was oh. perfectly kind of. Oh, it, felt like yeah. it felt like a cutscene. Yeah. It felt like a cutscene, but it's all just you know it just happened happened in game, and that's <laughs> they're the little bits that I I really enjoy seeing when the game gets played by um by you know by players is these little moments like Rich there have with that social interaction. It's lovely. Yeah. It's really lovely. So fantastic. I'm almost about to do my Mosasaur. Um, oh, here we go. Here. Getting the meantime, to the, here we go. the finale. I've been with the Mosasaur. I started to build a power station because I was just tired. The backups of, weren't working for you. I was just, I was just tired of doing yeah. the backups all the time. I'm just like, yeah. So I'm just going to get some substations in as well. There we go. Get some power in there. Get That's some great. Power. Stuff. Feels like he's going real for a real kind of last ditch attempt to make this park rating so as good as it can be. As as it Tim, can I be. need to prepare you that I think if I release this Mosasaur, we might hit five stars and the challenge level will finish. Okay. Just as a heads up. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, what, an in what a glorious way to, a, to potentially what end. A, it's so ironic. If we get to see it. <laughs> So I'm just gonna let's try and get uh, things tank. Like what, what if you were to just accidentally release the rest of the Tyrannodons? What I can do is intentionally sabotage. I think some of the yeah. guest rating. Maybe it's if okay. you sabotage yourself a little bit, of so course. we can see the Mosasaurus would be. I just wanted to when I started start doing this. I just I, wanted to give you all the context for why I'm doing it. Yeah. Um, because it is a custom. Because what you want to show is the uh, the delete brush that we now have, where you can delete multiple <laughs> things just at once. Multiple versus. <laughs> And you can switch no, things on and off. No, I don't do that. Demolish. I'm glad that button's there. Let's not, not get. Let's not go too let's hasty. Not go too hasty. Right. Welcome to the self sabotage part <laughs> of the stream. Um, you would think I've been doing this for a while, but no, it's now the point at which. Well, I'm the problem is you were too efficient. Like you're reaching that five star rating, and um, bring you down a bit more. You're doing too good. It was. It was normally on on previous kind of run throughs of this. Obviously, we we've, we've we've sort of test it and play it. Um, it's a very much a golden path of from here to there, there we go, 25, yeah. 30 minutes we're, we're, um, we're at Mosasaur. But of course here we're enjoying seeing all the bits and, and, and how, how Rich has built up his park, so that's why it's taken um, a little bit longer. We've been digressing and looking at all the other areas of yeah. and features that are coming. Oh, there was a different way to do this. It's all right, I'm Rich got all the tricks. I'm a fool to myself, I should have just deleted a viewing gallery. Do it. Oh yeah. Delete them. I mean the easiest way. Yeah. Can't see them. Can't see them. That's one of the biggest. Uh, <laughs> it's like the whole the whole appeal. economy's based yeah. on that, Rich. Yeah. It's all right. We're gonna we're gonna do our best to get you that Mosasaurus. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Everybody in chat. There we go. Okay. We're now to two and a half. Okay. So we've tanked our own parks rating. Okay. So we we've synthesized got, it. We've synthesized it. We have ready the money. To tolerant Mosasaurus. <laughs> yep. It's okay. Okay. As we saw with the, um, before you, oh, well, you're going to eat better anyway, so it's done. No, tell me about um, In the Avery Dome, Rich showed us the drone that the park yes. teams then control instead of actually entering uh, the dome. The Lagoons have a very similar thing with an underwater drone that they would then control and uh, perform all the duties that they would normally do on a land-based um, enclosure. So all the, all the same mechanics and priorities there. Just quite interesting seeing this little drone flying around the enclosure or okay. the, um, the marine. We're doing it. We've got Here we go. <laughs> um, do I have anyone that's going to make it quicker? No. So I need lots of. You need lots of um, welfare. welfare. Yeah, that's right. There we go. Taking nineteen percent off that, so it went from <laughs> three minutes twenty down to two minutes forty-one. Because he had some traits, and he had Ooh, he applied need... more than he needed in terms of the requisite skill for the scientist. We are going to need okay. uh, feeders. <clears throat> Oh yeah, you got to get the. There was also a suggestion in the chat. Oh, but you have to have the most uh, out first. Yeah. Of course. From one of our moderators, Osric, yeah. suggesting. Oh, Osric! Hi, Osric! Hey, Osric! I know. Uh, I suggesting know that well. when we have the Mosasaurus, uh, we could call it Francesca to, uh, yeah. in honor of the other person in the room here today. Yeah. So Absolutely. we have, of course, got the wonderful Francesca helping us with uh, producing the stream today. Yeah. Uh, so we can't we can't let her go without some sort no, of no, representation. No, no. Everyone no. else has had one. Absolutely. Uh, none have been as uh, legendary as mine, but you know, we we persevere. Well, let's see what that story pounds out first. Yeah. Of all. It might just be <laughs> that you broke out 
and hit a tree and then that was it and that was a bit of a <laughs> bad way to go so I guess we'll, 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 never we'll know. hold the legendary yeah. status back until we find out okay. what actually happened to you I'm going to use the time controls and the time yep. controls that we've added for Dress Audio Evolution 2 for these moments where you're rapidly trying to get to a Mosasaur <laughs> with these moments exactly you're screaming it and you're trying like, to get a Mosasaur time controls. what if you just want to need a Mosasaur and it's just taking it's just a minute and you're yeah so you've got real out. time, you've got uh, two times, and is it three? So yeah, it's two, three, three times. Two and there, three yeah. times. And of course you can pause the game as well. So if you need to take a moment just to sort of plan. There if are one, events in the game. If one of your Tyrannodons has escaped and you <laughs> have... <laughs> there are events in the gone. game that will stop it though. They, they, they sort of disable the time controls because it could be quite a powerful tool. So yeah. you know, we yeah. sort of have to balance the... Um, the use of those time controls. We don't want a calamity or a storm to come in and for yeah, it to absolutely. cause too much damage to you yeah. whilst, whilst you're at three speed. Yeah, so. yeah if it's something just went through at three speed and you didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Here we go. Here we are. Should we go to full screen? Here comes the Mosasaur. There we go. There she is. There she is, yeah. What a fantastic yes. creature. Incredible. Should we get that rename in now? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Welcome to the club, Fran. Welcome so now we've released well. it, we need to make sure we can feed it. Yes. And I mean, surely there's only one feeder to place down, Rich, isn't there? There is. Once you can get it researched. It. Oh, you have to research that one. Do you have to do that one and then I think I have to do the, next the one shark? As well. So there's two types of lagoon feeder. You have the piscivore feeder, which is the, the um, kind of cage that you can place down in a body of water that the pteranodons will eat, and also the um, things like the uh, Spinosaurus would eat from that, or uh, Baryonyx. Yep. Um, and then uh, you have these uh, lagoon feeders, one which is kind of like a shoal of fish that get um, released to the side of the pool for some sort of shoaly things. Shoaly and of course things. the one that we're <laughs> shoaly things. Again, all about the like I say, um, absolute resident dino expert. Lots of people come and ask me for all the technical terms. They do. Uh, got a bit tiring of you know being so scientifically correct, but I got through it. Surely. Um, and then of course there's the there's actual no feeder, which which we all know we want to place down and have a look at. So, irony. You love, love is now you need to probably increase your part rate. I need to get my part rate back up to three stars. So um, I'm just going to put this this thing guy back in. Um, going to delete some fencing. There we go. There okay. We go. And then what did I need? So has our Moses, where is she? Uh, you can see very quickly there as uh, Rich entered here, it's building up its territory as well. Has a yeah, absolutely. Stuff, yeah. I mean, there's going to be this territory space for, for the Mosasaurus mm -hmm. as well. Yep. Um, here we go. So I think we'll, we'll make sure we get to the feeding in. Yeah. So for those who have just joined, we have now built up the legendary Newbold Park featuring... <laughs> it's not that legendary. Legendary Newbold Park featuring an Avery with a very happy group of pteranodons whose names all begin with A. And of course, <laughs> yeah. a lagoon with yeah. a very soon to be very happy Mosasaur, uh, Mosasaurus. And the guests are probably happy too. So I'd say we're having yeah. a very successful park here. Yeah, I, I absolutely, I totally agree. Rich has dealt with some calamities along the way. We had um, the Tyrannosons uh, fancied a little excursion around the park. So they oh. broke out of the, the domes, but he managed to get them back under control and get them back in um, and kind of cover up the damage and uh, <laughs> get his safety rating back. Yes, and, uh, and then uh, Rich yeah, has almost been safety. doing too well and had to self-sabotage. He then so. had to self-sabotage, and then he had to undo all of that. And, <laughs> uh, too far. Yeah. So we're just uh, waiting to get your park rating up at this point so you can research the um, shark feeder. And of course you can see what we, uh, with the marine, uh, with the lagoon um, viewing gallery, you can also take a look from that view as well by uh, showing the view. On this one, of course, you can also lower the stand, so you can, yeah. like in the uh, Jurassic World film, they, um, the, whole, the whole thing can be lowered down. As you can see right here. To, and then the view obviously changes yes. um, to showing you the, the, uh, the Mosasaur from There's this view. There's a Mosasaur just 
just in the depths there. It's like she knew we'd come down. She's like, I'm just going to yeah. go over that way. This is very familiar to what we have in the studio <laughs> as well. <laughs> every time I look is, uh, is when uh, she won't come by, and every time I look away is where the Moser swims by. Okay. So I think we're just trying to get to 2.8 stars, is it? I'm at three stars. I'm three gonna, stars? You're at three stars top. now. Oh, you need to get to three stars. Yeah, I need three stars back to get the shark feeder. <clears throat> Put the hotel back where it was. Yep. It's fine. It's fine. We're doing fine. There we go. Now I can do there it. There we go. Shark. The marine shark feeder. Put all, all of the scientists on it. research. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, so as we've said before, some of the scientists have traits that you yep. can then um, utilise across the different tasks. Any science is going to be applied to any task. It's just if you some if you've got the right yeah exactly yeah. So hey, if you, you take can, scientists you can... who are more proficient in exactly. structural biology, exactly. you maybe don't want to put them for the uh, chemistry side. No, exactly. like, they'll probably be able to do a bit. I was thinking the same thing, Tim. Structural biology and <laughs> exactly the other thing the that you said. Thing. I was, you were thinking was the same thing. This is the kind of conversations we have at lunch yeah. here at Frontier. Is the different uh, worlds of science which we want to yeah. uh, to approach. Of course, is okay. biochemical, structural biology. You've, uh, the other one. The other one. Yeah. Which the physics? one you were about to. That's the one. Yeah. The physics one. Yeah. You've also got experimental physics, of course. <laughs> of course. Um, of course. So what are we putting down here? We're I'm going to put a souvenir. Oh, is that? I'm putting my food back down. Food back down. Yeah. <clears throat> so we can get that star rating up. So we can uh, show you all. Yeah. Uh, giving uh, the Mosasaurus uh, a decent meal. Yeah. Uh, and steaks, of course, for yeah. the guests. Just FYI, you With don't an ice cream actually machine. do that. It's, <laughs> Who doesn't it's, love his ice it's cream a food, machine? It's a, food, it's a food amenity that will sell steaks, <clears throat> lovely fountain, and an ice cream machine for after you finish your steak. Yeah. And what those internal modules do is make it more, it, it serves the interests of the guests that are near that park. So there's four guest interests. Standard, um, I can't remember the other one, three which helped me out. Standard, luxury, nature, nature and adventure. adventure. And depending on how you've built your park will um, attract different uh, one of those different demographics, or, or maybe more than one. Ish, and then you can uh, update your amenities to better s serve that, that interest. I'm going to try and be quiet here so we don't miss it. Uh, I'm going to delete. Else, or I was going to say delete those. Once you finish setting yeah. this yeah. up, there was a, a message as well from Eagles Pro saying, thanks for doing this, guys. It's really helped me understand how do new features work? And you're yeah. very welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for coming and, um, and watching. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Otherwise, it would be us three playing our game. I mean, so no which one. is always a great which time, be to be great. fair. It would be fun. We do that, it's always a lot of fun. Yeah. So now, now, we play with, now, with, now, with bated breath. If anyone has rated my park and wishes to yes. submit well, it. I suppose, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe we ask, should, uh, should we, we'll, we'll, so, get, we'll yes. do that. Can Please we? Uh, can you, out of five, <laughs> either do literally just the number one, two, three, four, or five? If you pop that in the chat right now for your rating for Park Newbold, while we wait oh. for the Mosasaur. And what uh, would you, to, what, oh, what would your rating be, Tim? Um, she go I'm gonna probably, considering that my namesake has just been abandoned, I'm gonna say a one. A one. My oh, namesake was abandoned. Um, and you think that was a direct? It Correlation to how, how Rich has managed and laid out the park. Oh, there's a lot of numbers. A fives, fives. That's a good number. There was a six out of five. A ten. That's more than uh, five. Okay, if, I think if it's it goes, averaging out at about <laughs> four. There's a lot of threes. And I think I'll take that. That's a good Oh, there's a minus two. <laughs> uh, five gold blooms. Five gold There you go. That's the four winner. Four timmies. <laughs> four timmies. <laughs> Would have been five uh, if you hadn't let Tim... Uh, <laughs> I thought I'd get horrible five that, has, that did hit you. The public rating went right yeah. down there, I think. Uh, someone said, if I have to be honest, 6.5. Wow. Um, someone rated one, and then someone else rated 100. So I think out of five, we're probably looking at more around four, I think, okay. is where we're settling. That's a good average. Yeah. I was going to give it a good, I was going to give it a 4.8. 4.8? Yeah, yeah. Out of five? Yeah. Hmm? Out of five? Yeah. Oh, yeah. fair play to you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. The, the fences were the, the point too. I had to deduct some of those sharp right angles. You see a tail over there. The strong. So Maybe design, she's coming like this way. They chose the design choice. It's, uh, it's for his aesthetic. It's, it's very, yeah, yeah. The aesthetic, I would know by that sharp pointy fence that was in a new bold park. But <laughs> <laughs> The lack it's of curvature. It's a 4.8, I'd say. What would you say, Tim? Oh, you gave it a 1, didn't you? Yeah, because of uh, leaving Tim to his demise. Yeah. yeah. I think she fed on those fish already, didn't she? Yeah, she's... Where, how, is she actually hungry? Mm, have we removed the other feeders? I did, and then she yeah. started getting uncomfortable, and I got I got a bit I got a bit worried about her. But 
Because, and also because this is the stream now. Because of the way the um, we've come the, so far, I don't yeah. want to. They have um, the food and their hun hunger need. Their food hunger. and hunger needs is that she's. We have to kind of wait for her to. She's not a performing monkey. She, I think she's oh. coming. Oh. Is this, uh, she might be a performer monkey if you hang a be, shark over the top of her. I might be the moment. No, no. It's just silence it's just falls over the studio. It's like, oh, it's the tease. Have to let nature. Incredible. <laughs> I can't believe I almost spoke over it as well. <laughs> almost. You have to let nature take its course, and it did. Well done. Did. There you go. Incredible. Oh, and then the so the falls. very iconic the uh, shark feeder. Incredible. So I, I think we should probably call it there for today. Okay. Um, but so thank you so much for joining. Thank you for uh, having Adam. me on. It's been and an absolute also pleasure. Rich, who I'm gesturing at, but of course you cannot see. <laughs> um, but so I just want to say thank you very much to all of our wonderful guests. We've seen a whole bunch of the game. As always, we've come together to talk about what has been revealed during this month. Uh, you can pre-order Jurassic World Evolution 2 right now on Steam, on PlayStation, and on Xbox. And the game is coming out on November 9th. So once more, I just want to say thanks to a few other people. We've obviously got all of our wonderful guests. There's Adam, there's Rich, there was Amy, and there was Andy, who were yeah. wonderful today on the stream. We've also got Francesca, who has been uh, doing an incredible job of running this entire stream in the background for everybody. And then I've seen a bunch of the mods at home as well have been jumping in and helping. I saw Heather, I saw Osric, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. for all the others who I couldn't quite see there. And we should probably give a little shout out to El Tannen, who's been helping coordinate all of that as well. So yep. uh, thank you everybody for all your help with the stream today. I hope you at home enjoyed it. And uh, we will see you next time. Bye.